Hey guys, welcome to our first video of this prompt engineering course. I'm so thrilled to welcome all of you guys to this exciting world of prompt engineering. This course is designed to provide you with a comprehensive introduction to the fundamental principles, methodologies, and all possible applications of prompt engineering. With the help of a theoretical concept and practical exercises, you'll be able to gain a solid understanding of various prompt engineering disciplines, their role in solving real-world problems, and all those things uh, that are related to prompt engineering. Okay, so moving forward, if I can introduce myself to you guys. So, my name is Mohamed Usman, and I've been in this ID field for almost four years now, and I have two years of teaching experience. All right, so moving forward, let's just quickly discuss the course overview. Like, what exactly are we going to be learning in this course? So, yeah, we have five sections for you guys in this course. So first of all, we'll start with a brief introduction about the course and the outline. Then we have, like, the basics and prerequisites, which will include everything like about chat GPT, its website layout, some of the important terminologies as well that you need to know before getting started to prompt engineering and then we'll see some of the modifiers as well, prompt engineering practices and its principle. All right, the next section will include all those possible types of prompting that are really important for you guys and that you really need to know if you want to master the amazing skills of prompt engineering and then we'll also see some daily life scenarios some real world problems like how you can implement prompt engineering techniques and open ai in your daily life and get your work done very efficiently and the last section will include some ethics and consideration as well which are also really important if you want to interact with ai in a good way and you want that to give you the best output possible for you all right so once again i welcome all of you and i'm really excited to be with all of you guys in this exciting journey of prompt engineering all right, so that will be it for this video and I'll see you in the next one. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to our first module of Prompt Engineering course. Where in this video, we'll be discussing about some basics of Prompt Engineering and also uh, some of the prerequisites that you need to know before using chat GPT or AI. So yeah, first of all, uh, I'll give you guys a bit of introduction about Prompt Engineering and chat GPT. And also we will be seeing how you can use uh, chat GPT on open AI with you without any problem. So yeah, first of all, let's just see what is basically prompt engineering is so prompt engineering is uh, actually the practice of designing precise prompts queries or instructions you can say to guide machine learning models and in that there's particularly a language models uh, in generating desired outputs so basically this is a kind of a technique in which uh, you give prompts or commands to ai and it instruct that by using machine learning models and give you the desired or demanded outputs that you need and it also involves fine tuning and refining prompts to shape the model's behavior and improve its performance for specific tasks so yeah moving forward let's just also see what is chat gp or OpenAI. ChatGPT is a language model that is developed by OpenAI and it is based on GPT which is generative pre-trained transformer architecture and designed to engage in conversational interactions and also uh, ChatGPT can generate human-like responses to prompts and has been trained on a diverse range of internet texts to provide useful and contextually relevant information. So it is basically a language model that is actually developed by OpenAI and it uses a GPT architecture and that is actually designed to get human-like conversations and you know it basically works the same. Uh, you, you need to give it to command and prompts to that and it will process all that and give you the desired or specific output that you need by using AI. All right, so yeah, now we will see how you can integrate or install chat GPT in your system and how you can, you know, start using that right away. So, so let's just see that. All right, so first of all, what you need to do is you need to go to your browser and you need to search chat GPT and you need to click on this open AI link and after that this kind of an interface will appear on your screen you need to click on try GPT right here and as soon as you hit that it will give you two options either you want to log in or sign up so obviously if, you, if you're using it for the first time you need to sign up for that course you need to click on sign up option and then it will ask you to create your account if you want you want you can create your account with Google with Microsoft account or even your Apple 
ID, like this totally up to you. With my case, I'm gonna create my account with Google. So I'm gonna continue with Google. Okay, then it will ask you to enter your Gmail ID. I'm gonna enter that. Uh, then after that, it will ask you for your first and last name and your birth date. You can enter that as well. And it will ask you now for your phone number. You need to enter that and verify that as well. Send code via SMS. And yeah, then after that, it will give you a six digit code into your phone. So you're gonna copy that and paste it right here. Okay, yeah, so as you guys can see, it's just showing you like our account has been created. Just gonna hit next and it will just uh, tell you some information about chat GPT. I'm gonna hit next and uh, hit done and yeah that will be quite a bit of interface of chat gpt first of all you can see your account information at the left bottom corner and then you can see your account details into that you can log out as well you can go to settings and you know you can select theme from a uh, light dark or anything you want and have the option of new chat and uh, if you want you can upgrade that to plus as well that's of your choice so yeah now you're good to go let me just type any prompt here and see if that's working for us or not so i'm just gonna type here what is prompt engineering all right yeah so as you guys can see it's working as a charm and you know with every prompt or every chat you're gonna give to chat gpt is gonna be saved with you all that data will be saved with you on this bar right here yeah so you don't have to worry about losing any of your data or stuff in chat gpt it will automatically save you uh in your history so yeah actually that was it for uh today's video i hope you liked it in this video i told you guys about a little bit brief introduction about prompt engineering and uh, chat gpt or opening AI and I also told you guys how you can basically install and set up chat GPT in your system and how you can make that run right away. So yeah, that will be it for today's video. I hope you guys liked it and I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye. Hey guys, welcome back to the next topic of our module one. We're in this video, we'll be discussing about prompt engineering basics and prerequisites. And in that, we'll be discussing about some important terminologies, which can be, you know, inputs, outputs, and parameters that we require in prompt engineering and also we'll be seeing some modifiers as well for better output of our prompt all right so first of all we're going to discuss what are basically inputs so inputs are basically uh, the starting point of any prompt engineering journey these are basically you can say tasks questions and information that you can provide to chat gpt or ai and it will help you uh, make that or build that output for you so for input let's just take an example you're asking any questions to ai and demanding some answers from that so that actually explains is what inputs it let's just say you ask uh, ai or chat gpt to translate some sentence uh, from english to spanish right so the sentence you want to put it in english that will be your input so the ai will give you a spanish version of that sentence that you want that to translate it into so the spanish version will be your output so these are basically what inputs and outputs are so there's one more thing that you need to keep that in mind that obviously the level and the degree of the output will depend on how accurate and or how good you put input so obviously the better the input the better will be the output. So you can say in short, like uh, input is directly proportional to the output. Okay, moving forward, let's just discuss parameters now. So parameters are basically, you know, some kind of settings or you can say kind of tweaks that you can perform on prompts to make your prompts, you know, more and more better and more and more accurate so that AI or chat GPT can very easily understand that and uh, give you the desired output that you want. And in other words, parameters can also be some kind of a limitation or you can say some kind of modification that you can give in prompts to just, you know, make your output more and more better. So yeah, let's just get an example. You want AI to uh, generate an essay for you and you will give it as a parameter that, you know, you want that essay in up to a word limit of 300 words, right? So that can be your parameter that you can provide to uh, uh, AI in order to get the accurate desired output that you want. Okay, yeah, so let's just now move forward and discuss what are the modifiers that we can use to make our output better, which are you can use adjectives like red, happy, large, exciting, and you can use adverbs like quickly, well, loudly, you can use intensifiers, negatives, number of words, you know, like you can use small, small words or you can generate small, small accent just to make your output more and more accurate. And after that, you can also wear time words like now, yet, soon. Uh, you can use place words and degree words as well. So yeah, these are a few of the modifier words you can say that can help you make your output go well and well. So yeah, until then, I'll 
you in the next one. Hey guys, welcome back to the third video for module one, which is prompt engineering basics and prerequisites. And in this video today, we'll be discussing about few of the basic principles for prompt engineering. Like if you're gonna master these principles, like no doubt, you will be a good prompt engineer or a perfect one in no time. So yeah, let's just see what principles are those and what are those things that you need to follow in order to be a good prompt engineer. All right, so these are the basic principles. First one is focus on your topic. So obviously, uh, if you want want to prompt anything or about any situation or any topic so you should have a, a little bit of a background about that it doesn't mean like you should have a lot of knowledge about that because obviously that's exactly why you're using AI for that so you can gain knowledge about that topic right but the thing is you know you should be a lot focused to your topic you should be serious about that and you know whatever output or answer the AI is giving to you you should be like very focused to that and able to understand all that so let me just read you uh, with an example, right? Okay, so let's just say if you are a student and you want ChatGPT to write an essay for you. So for the first case, let's just say if you are not focused enough on your topic, if you're not familiar with, you know, uh, subheadings and, you know, the little headings of that. So let's just try first. Write me an essay for mobile phone. So let's just see what output is going to give it to us. All right, yeah, so as you guys can see, it's created an essay for me, but, you know, uh, it has introduction, body, and, you know, the headings are, let's just say, if I don't want this heading, and this heading is extra in that, so, yeah, obviously, this is not according to my whole need, and what I really wanted ChatGPT to do, right? But let's just say, uh, now, if I'm more focused on my topic, now I'm more familiar with that, now I really know what headings I want from ChatGPT, and what exactly I need as an output from AI, so I'm just gonna type my prompt once again as write me an essay for advantages and disadvantages of a mobile phone for students. All right, yeah, so now you can see like, you know, with more detailing on my topic that I want ChatGPT to work on, I wrote advantages and disadvantages of mobile phone for students. So particularly, it gave me an introduction and as soon as that, it just jumped uh, right into the advantages and uh, gave me the exact headings that I wanted and after that it just gave me the disadvantages as well so yeah uh, now you can see like uh, with a little bit of focus and you know background on your topic you can get help from chat GPT very effectively uh, rather than you know just writing in simple prompt and you know with no background knowledge of your topic so yeah and the second principle we have is assume nothing so this is a very important principle in my view if, if you ask me so you cannot assume like chat GPT or AI is uh, right all the time like it can have ever right so you do not assume like whatever output like chat GPT has given to us you will consider that as true all the time you definitely need to validate that and confirm that from some third party applications or you can say from google just to see like if you have the correct version of that output or not all right the third one is to start with simple prompts obviously if you want to uh, make your output more and more better so obviously you can use as much prompts as you want obviously the more prompts will result in the more and more accurate and perfect uh, output for you all right so for this principle let's just go with an example like you know i want to join gym and you know i want to get more and more information and knowledge about you know how gym works what training should i need to do and i will try to tell chat GPT about all my information let's just start with our you know simple prompts and after that we'll jump into more and more prompts just to get the best output that we actually need so i'm gonna type here i need to join gym to lose weight what should i do let's let's just see what output is going to give it to us for that all right yes yeah, so chat gpt did give me an output but that's not exactly what i wanted i wanted chat gpt to ask me about my body weight like what kind of workout am I into and you know what exactly I wanted to so I wanted ChatGPT to ask me question instead of telling me hold this paragraph uh, bullet type of thing which I really didn't want ChatGPT to ask so yeah I'm just gonna go ahead and time here another prompt and tell him about the whole scenario what's going on and why I uh, wanted to join gym so as in I'm 20 years old with 80 kilos weight and I'm about one on my BMI as well I don't like to run, so suggest me a good workout to do in order to lose weight and gain muscle. So let's just see what output is going to give it to us for that now. 
All right, so it did give me an output for that with all those Barca routine. It just gave me about warm up, circuit training, interval training. So this is actually not pleasing to I, and I'm not able to understand what exactly it's want to say. So I'm just gonna prompt him once again to create me a tabular format for that, so I can you know easily follow that, and it will be really helpful for me to understand. So I'm just gonna type in now, show all this routine to me in tabular format, in order for me to easy to understand. All right, yeah, so now you can see this looks a lot more engaging and pleasing now. So it just says workout component, exercise example, sets and reps on the last column now. So now what I can do is I can easily follow uh, this routine in my gym procedure and with all the information I gave on top of us. So this will suit exactly depending upon my situation and why I want to do workout. So yeah, the fourth principle is I trade and improve. Like I trade your prompts or, you know, modify them uh, depending upon the situation and scenario. And that will help you also uh, improve your output as well. All right, yes. So for this, what you can do is you can keep on inserting prompts and, you know, modify them according to your need. And, you know, keep on telling a chat GPT more and more like what exactly you want and what you want chat GPT to work on and what exactly is your scenario so you can uh, just prompt again and again so that is actually quite a bit of a similar procedure of our third principle which was start with simple prompts and keep on doing prompt and prompt until you get the best desired output that you want then the fifth one is obviously practice makes better so yeah the more and more practice you're gonna put in into this prompt engineering course obviously it will make you a better and better prompt engineer and yeah you can master that in no time so yeah that was basically a quick short like briefing about few uh, basic principles of prompt engineering and i'll catch you guys in my next module where uh, we'll be discussing about some of the types of prompt engineering until then I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to another video of Prompt Engineering course, where in this video, we'll be discussing a type of prompt engineering, and that is known as short prompting, which are zero short prompting, one short prompting, and few short prompting. So before starting this video, let me just demonstrate this lab to you guys. So we'll be using prompts to get output from chat GPT in an effective way to enhance focus and precision of our output. And also we'll be applying prompt engineering techniques to improve our output as always. So moving forward, uh, let's just see what is short prompting. So short prompting basically it has uh, three variations which entail giving chat GPT complete autonomy uh, to generate any response with zero short prompting. And you know, you can uh, place parameters and you know, you can give reference data as well, which happens in one and few short prompting. So if you're still unclear, uh, don't worry. The next example will make you guys more clear. So in zero short short prompting you don't give any previous data or guidelines you know before completing requests so let's just say you are giving any prompt to chat gpt right so for zero short prompting you won't be giving any previous background details or any other information so you will straight away get into your prompt without any extra information or any extra detail but in one shot prompting you are only allowed to give only one piece of data or guideline to complete the request and similarly for few shot obviously by the name is suggest is you can add multiple pieces of data or guidelines to complete your request so yeah i hope it get clear to you guys and let's just now move forward and see what's the prompt formula for zero one and few short prompting so for zero short prompting you straight away a right prompt with no reference that's the formula for that and for one shot prompting you put one example or one reference and then straight away after that you give your prompt related to that example or reference and in few shot obviously uh, you use examples one two three or as many as you want as your reference and then you write that prompt related to that reference all right so these will be a few of the examples that we'll be doing in today's lab so without further ado let's just jump right into our chat gpt all right so here i am with my chat gpt open and first of all i uh, will see how the zero shot prompting works so i'm just gonna give it an example to write me a youtube script for my tech review channel so in this example as you guys can see like i didn't give any information or further anything like, you know, what exactly, what is my topic for my tech review channel or what gadget am I reviewing in? So yeah, I didn't give any information. So yeah, let's just see how chat GPT will get output for this. All right, yeah, so as you guys can see with my first example of zero shot prompting, didn't give me like a YouTube strip for any specific topic or any specific gadget. It just provided me a template, which I have to edit and you know, 
fill it up according to my need which is quite a bit of a hustle if you ask me and uh, yeah so this is not something clear maybe topics or you can say the things he provided in this I maybe mean, I'm not in need of that so yeah this is a very you can say undirectional way of using chat GPT with just zero shot prompting so if we move forward let's just do uh, our second example which was one shot prompting so for that I'm gonna ask chat GPT now to write me a YouTube script for my tech review channel related to the latest iPhone. So yeah, in this I just provided one kind of information or reference which is for the latest iPhone. So let's just see whether it will improve uh, the output for us this time or not. So let's just hit enter and see that. All right, yeah, so now you can see like as soon as I provided uh, with a little bit of information it was just one reference, which is latest iPhone. It just provided me a complete, you know, first of all, you start off with the unboxing. Then you can do like a, a footage of iPhone packaging. And, you know, now it is a little bit more precise, but, you know, you cannot say like that's a perfect way of using ChatGPT or that's a perfect way to, you know, master your prompt engineering techniques. So still, like, you know, uh, as I told you guys earlier as well, like the more you put effort into ChatGPT, the more you're going to prompt ChatGPT, the more best and best kind of outputs you're going to gain from AI. So yeah, let's just now move forward and do our last example, uh, which was few shot prompting. We will be providing more than one reference to chat GPT and, you know, we'll try to get the best output possible. All right, so this time I said chat GPT to write a five minute YouTube script on the latest iPhone camera specification for my tech review channel. Start with a 10 second hook and notate a phone for each main point. So yeah, as you guys can see, I provide multiple kind of information and reference to ChatGPT now. I said you need you need to make a five minute YouTube strip. That is a one reference. Then I have the second one as latest iPhone camera specification. Then I have third one to make a 10 second hook and notate a photo for each main point. So yeah, we have like three to four references in this example. So let's just hit enter and see like whether we'll get a perfect output for that or not. All right, yeah, so now you can see like, you know, I got the perfect output from chat GBD just the way I wanted. So this is all uh, for the iPhone camera uh, in this example, because I wanted to make a strip on the latest iPhone camera specifications. So first of all, it says you need to uh, go for the high resolution capture. Then we have a stunning cityscape photo to display on screen then we have a little bit of information about night mode then we have for portrait mode as well and then we have for ultra wide angle which is also very important and then we have for advanced video capabilities and you know with that now i can say like you know i did use chat gbd in a very perfect way providing as much information as required and you know to get the best output possible from chat gbd you know that's that's the way to use ai in my view you know you should prove to be more knowledgeable to ai i know you, you need to give like as many information as possible to get that perfect and the best outcome possible so yeah that was pretty much it for today's video i hope you guys liked it and don't forget to watch more videos on this course and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to another video of the prompt engineering course where we'll be studying about chain of thought prompting. So this is one of the most commonly used and important type of prompting where you'll be using it all the time in prompt engineering. So before starting the video, let me just demonstrate this lab to you real quickly. We'll be using prompts to get output from chat GPT uh, in the steps for better explanation and you'll be applying prompt engineering techniques to improve your output. So yeah, before getting into the lab, let me just demonstrate that to you. What is basically chain of thought prompting? Uh, so chain of thought prompting is an approach to improve the reasoning ability of large language models in arithmetic, common sense, and symbolic reasoning tasks. So basically what that it is, it gives you a very uh, structural and stepwise answer, which will be very easy for you guys to understand. Let's just say you ask a question from that. So it will give you a very structural a uh, very step-to-step -step answer so that will be very easy for you like all the way from the beginning till the end you'll be learning uh, the answer of that question like stepwise so that will be very effective and really easy for you guys to understand so just like all the ties it also have a very simple basic formula so first of all you need to type your question so this is basically a multi procedure uh, formula you first of all you need to type your question that you want to ask and then it'll give you a response to that and 
and then you're going to type in your question again with a prompt you'll say let's go step by step and it will give you a very cool step to step procedure or you can say answer to that that will be very easy for you to understand so yes yeah, these will be the example that i will be doing for you guys so let's not waste any time and let's just dive right into it all right so here is the chat gpd open with me right now so i'm just gonna go ahead and enter my first example that was what is the diameter of the sun? And let's just see what output is going to give us. All right, so as you guys can see, just give me a very three to four line basic output. It just said like the diameter of the sun here approximately it's 1.39 million kilometers. The value may vary slightly depending on the specific measurement method used, right? In short, just give me an answer, but I'm not sure with that. Obviously, it's, it's very hard to understand. I need a stepwise, right? So I need to know uh, first, like what is diameter and how do you find diameter? How, what is actually it means? I need all those information step to step wise. So I'm just going to enter my question question again and next thing I'm gonna say is let's go step by step as it was in our formula all right so now you can see just gave me a uh, quite a bit a detailed answer you said the Sun's diameter is approximately 1.39 million kilometers this value represents the distance around the Sun from one side to other passing through its center so it just also told me about like what basically a diameter is just gave me a little bit information of that as well so since diameter can also be expressed in terms of its angular size so yeah now it is actually very uh engaging and attracting for me to you know understand it a bit more now so okay if you're still not understandable don't worry i'll get, i'll try to explain it to you by one more example so now i'm gonna go ahead and ask him like about quadratic formula which is of algebra i'm just gonna ask him what it is and let's see what it's gonna give an output for that So now you can see this gave me a uh, complete uh, information about the quadratic formula. It says it's ax squared plus bx plus c and it's also to like a or b and c are constant over here and it x represent the variable. All right. So now I'm just going to go ahead and enter the same prompt again, which was what is quadratic formula. And I'm going to ask and I'm going to enter my second prompt, which, which was in our formula too. Let's go. step by step okay yeah so now you can see it's a very structural method now so now it's just changed our whole paragraph thing to uh, you know number bullets so it said start with the quadrating equation standard form it just gave us a standard form now and you can say now you have to identify the values in the next step and in the next step you have to uh, substitute those value into the quadratic formula quadratic formula they need to simplify this expression first and you need to give the discriminant and you know all those good steps and after that it will give you the values of x that satisfy the quadratic equation and now if you're going to follow all these like step by step you you'll be able to apply that quite efficiently like the way it was before as you can see over here so it wasn't making any sense right so yeah as you guys can see this is how uh, we change a simple paragraph type of output into a step-by-step -step output where it will be very easy and it will be very engaging for you to follow and just to you know apply that in your uh, daily life example all right yeah so that will be it for this lecture i hope you guys liked it and i'll see you in the next one hey guys what's up welcome back to another video of prompt engineering course in this lesson we're going to talk about fill in the blank prompting so before we start the video, let me just demonstrate this lab for you guys real quickly. We'll be using prompts to get output from chat GVD in the form of fill in the blanks. And second of all, we'll be applying prompt engineering techniques to improve our output. So if you understand this, what is basically fill in the blank prompting? Obviously, it will be a very new thing for most of you guys. So no worry, I'll explain to you. This format basically allows the user to focus on specific aspect of the sentence or idea that encourages the bird thinking and also additionally it is a very flexible tool for learning and communication that can easily be adapted to different situations so yeah to answer all of you guys question uh let me tell you guys and because of this format uh, that the chat gpt is going to output its content so obviously it, it will contain a suitable formula and because of that formula you're going to be 
exploiting and creating prompts that generate the most concise and resourceful responses. So basically what you're going to do is uh, you're going to let ChatGPT uh, do all the work for you. It's going to give you a good output with all the fill in the blanks format and you can just you know fill in those blanks according to your needs and according to your requirements. So yeah that will be actually very helpful for you. You would not have to do a lot of effort, a lot of work. ChatGPT AI will do the work for you because of that common prompt we will be giving to it. So yeah if we move forward we do have have a proper formula for ChatGPT in order to get that suitable fill in the blank format. You're going to say hey, you're an expert at creating prompts that generate the most concise and responsible responses. So what additional bullets can I add to following prompt to improve the output? So basically this is one of the technique you're going to use that we'll be discussing later as well. So first of all you're going to be uh, writing this statement to ChatGPT and then you're going to write it my prompt is and you'll insert your prompt. Any prompt of your choice that you want uh, ChatGPT to work on and then after it's going to give you the whole output you're going to say again now turn these bullet points into a fill in the blank format where I can easily put my information, where I can easily, you know, insert my information into. So then it will give you a very good proper fill in the blank format that will be very easy for all of you guys to put your information in. So yeah, these are basically the example they will be doing today. Uh, so let's just not waste any time and let's just dive right into the chat GBD and proceed our lab. Okay, so following our formula, first of all, we'll type in the first part of our formula and we'll write in the example that I had, that I told you guys earlier, I will ask him that that I have $100,000 in savings, what should I invest in? So let's just see what it says to us. So yeah, as you guys can see, uh, we have a very in-depth bullet point uh, list of basically around 10 things, but we're not gonna waste any time. We're just gonna jump right into our next part of the formula, which was now turn these bullet points into a fill in the blank format where I can easily uh, outdoor information in two. So let's just see what it'll do for us right now. All right, so now you guys can see right here, it has given me all the advices or information you can say into a very nice uh, fill in the blank. It's actually asking me right now, so what are your investment goals? What are the time horizon that is available for you? And what are your risk tolerance, diversification, uh, your experience and limitation, everything, you know? It's just asking us the best possibilities that we have, you know, that will be suitable enough for uh, the investment or you can say startup that should be best for us so here what i can do is i can just copy all those information and i can paste right here into my command prompt again and i can simply fill in the blank right actually there is no forcing you right here you can fill in the blanks if you know the answer for that and if you're not clear with anything you can simply leave that and the rest of that the ai will do the job for you it will uh, assign you or it will suggest you a business or startup that is suitable for you. So let's just go for a time horizon uh, investment goals. Uh, you can just simply say my investment goals are starting my business. And for the time horizon, you can say I plan to invest for, uh, let's just do a short term here, okay? And you can say my risk tolerance is, let's just say I am very tolerant to, you can say high, high risk, okay? Let's just go for a high here. And for diversification, you can say, uh, let's just go for asset in diversification, okay? Oops, sorry. We're gonna put it right here, okay? And for knowledge and experience, uh, let's just say how much knowledge and experience I have, normal experience. And the next thing is asking ge uh, geographic limitations. Uh, that is actually a point I'm not sure about. So let's just, you know, let's just exemplify it like that to just leave this one for now, okay? Let's just see if, if it will be still giving us the uh, advice or suitable output or not. And let's just go for this one. And the last thing we're gonna say him uh, to do is suggest me a suitable output for the given information. Let's just hit enter and see if, see what it's gonna tell us or suggest us. 
Okay, so based on the information provided, the AI suggested us some investment strategy. So the advice uh, it gave us to, you know, to go for the investment, all right? So he said, uh, since your goal is to start a business, it's important to allocate a portion of your savings towards that venture and consider researching and evaluating potential business opportunities that align with your interests and expertise. So time horizon for that is set, as you mentioned, a short-term investment horizon. So it knows what kind of input we put into uh, the prompt and it's actually advising us or giving us the information according to that. So that is actually a very important point you need to note down. And he said it, it is advisable to focus on relatively liquid and low risk uh, options. Uh, this can help ensure that your funds are readily available when you need them for your business. So as we as we move forward to the risk tolerance, uh, with the high risk tolerance, just also remember that we had a high risk tolerance. You may consider exploring investment avenues that offer potentially higher returns but come with the increased volatility so yeah uh, by that you guys saw that we changed the bullet point into a fill in the blank format because of the reason we could easily put our information that is related to us and that is according to us and by that the ai could get, give us a better output or you can say a better solution or a better advice so this is actually a very good use or you can say a benefit of filling the blank prompting because obviously before it was in a bullet form. So we cannot put any information that is for us or that is related to us into, into the bullet points, of course. So yeah, for that, uh, we change that into uh, filling the blank prompt and we put in the information. And now look how easy it is. It's giving us all the information and all the advices. Yeah, so that was basically it for our today's video. I hope you guys liked it. If you do, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more videos like that. And I'll catch you guys in the next video, Prompt Engineering. See you, bye-bye. Hey guys, welcome back to another video of Prompt Engineering course, where in this video we'll be discussing about ask before answer prompting. So before we jump right into it, let me just demonstrate this lab to you guys real quickly. We'll be using prompts to get output from chat GPT in more clear way for better understanding and also uh, we will be applying prompt engineering techniques to improve our output as always so before moving further let me just brief you a little bit about what is basically ask before answer prompting is so ask before answer prompting is basically a technique to guide chat gpt to ask for clarification before giving any answer and this also helps uh, to ensure that the model's answers are as accurate and specific as possible so this is actually a very useful technique in which you first uh, prompt chat GPT to ask you questions before giving any answer. So let's just say if you want any clarification on any case or any situation. So first of all, you'll tell chat GPT to ask some question on that topic from us so that it should be more clear to chat GPT before gi giving any output. So the chat GPT will ask us questions. So this will actually result in a very efficient and a very good output as compared to the very initial one that the chat GPT gives us as always so this is what basically the ask before answer prompting is so as always we do have a prompt formula for this type of prompting as well don't worry guys if you are bothered with the length of this formula it's really easy these are just some lines you know that are written by me for the better performance of chat GPT so first of all you're gonna say you are an expert in the field of whatever industry you want to a question about whatever industry you want chat GPT to answer for you then you're gonna say I'm gonna ask you some specific task to complete but before you answer I want you to do the following if you have any question about my task or uncertainty about delivering the best answer possible always ask the bullet points possible for clarification before generating your answer is that understood so yeah that is actually uh, some edited prompt by me you can simply type your question and ask him to answer before that for better output but this is actually a way better solution in my case if you're gonna try this you will get as accurate uh, output as possible so yeah after that chat GPT will agree to you and it will say okay so whatever your question is is gonna ask you answers first and then you're gonna say great my question is is blah 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 whatever your question will be and you're gonna give chat GPT the task and you're gonna say please ask any question so that I can improve my prompt before you completing your task okay so if we dive deeper to that it's really really simple so basically first of all you're gonna say chat GPT uh, you are an expert in the field of whatever your field is then you're gonna say I'm gonna give you a task I'm gonna give you a specific task you have to answer that for me but before you answer you have to ask questions about that task so that I can get my output more efficient and more better.
So that is basically whole ask before answer prompting is. And yeah, this will be the example that we'll be doing. We will be putting industry as a food industry and we'll ask the question to ChatGPT that how can I drive more sales from a food business? And the task you're gonna give it at the end, you will say, how can I use ChatGPT to maximize my productivity? All right, so let's just dive right into our ChatGPT. That way it will be very better for you guys to understand. All right, so here I have ChatGPT open with me right now. So first of all, I'm just gonna type in my first First prompt which was in our formula I'm gonna say in the exact same thing that was written in the formula you're expert in the field of industry I'm going to ask you some specific tasks to complete but before you answer I want you to do the following and this is what I'm gonna prompt here for the first time and for the industry as I it was written in our example we'll be selecting food industry for today and the rest will gonna be the same and just let's just now hit enter and see what output is gonna give it to us all right, so yeah, as you guys can see, it just uh, agreed to our condition. It said, yes, I understand if I have any question or uncertainties about your task, I will ask for clarification using bullet point before you an answer. So yeah, that is why I was telling you guys that this formula is very efficient and very accurate. So if you guys are gonna type this one and enter, so it will always agree to your uh, situation or statement. So now we'll go ahead and put our second prompt, which was in our formula. So we're gonna allocate ChatGPT a task and we also gonna ask him a question as well okay so we'll say great my question is let's type in our question here i'm gonna say how can i use chat gbt to maximize my productivity and it said please ask any questions you have so that i can improve my prompt before you complete your task so now as soon as i will hit enter it's gonna uh, it's gonna ask me the questions right away so i'm gonna answer all of them one by one and after that it will give me a better and efficient output that will be very easy for me to put my information in and get the better result out of it so yeah as you guys can see it just asked could you please provide more information about your food business what type of uh, food do you offer? Do you have any physical location in online prisons? Then it's asked what market strategies have you already employed for your food business? Are there any specific challenges or obstacles you are currently facing in terms of driving sales? How do you currently engage with your customer? Do you have any existing channels for communication or customer feedback? And the fifth question is asked, is are there any unique aspects of competitive advantage of your food business that we should consider while discussing strategies so yeah you can uh, basically go on and on with that so now if you want to simply answer it for the first time you're going to simply answer it's going to give you the output but if you want chat gpt to ask more and more questions to get like more deeper inside of that to get the best output possible so yeah obviously you can use this formula as many times as you want but for today i'm just gonna do it for once so i'm gonna answer first question we'll simply say our food business is it's a restaurant and we're gonna answer the second question which was marketing strategies we're just gonna answer it like we don't have any current marketing strategies Yeah, so third question, let's just answer it like we are we are facing very very less amount of customers. So that is basically our one concern that I want to tell Chad GPT about. And the fourth question I'm gonna answer is as yeah, we do have we do have social media channels and the last question that it asked was are there any unique aspects or competitive advantages of your food business that we should consider while discussing strategies so let's just answer it by saying no i don't see any advantages and uh, let's just now enter all this information and just see what kind of output or advice or something that GPT will give it to us. Okay, yes. Yeah, so as you guys can see, those are actually very engaging and very useful strategies that ChatGPT has finalized it and give us a very good output of that. So yeah, in short, based on only those two formulas or two prompts, so you can see how well you can use ChatGPT to give you complete final output that will basically relate accurately to your condition 
condition it will first ask you like what problems do you have after explaining all problems to chat GPT in the form of question that is going to ask from our first part of the formula so you can see how well it explains to us and how well it give us strategies in order to keep our business or any other task or industry you want to put in it it will give you very good strategies for that all right yeah so that will be it for this lecture i hope you guys liked it and i'll see you in the next one hey guys welcome back to another video of prompt engineering course uh in this lesson we're going to talk about one of my favorite functionalities with chat dbd which is basically tabular formatting so before we start the video let me just demonstrate this lab with you guys real quickly we'll be using prompts to get output from chat GPT in the form of tabular format and also we'll be applying prompt engineering techniques to improve our output as always all right so first of all we'll discuss what is basically tabular format prompting is so this format allows allows for clear organization and presentation of data, make it easier for the user to analyze and comprehend the output, leading it to uh, more accurate understandings and insights. So it is basically, uh, you know, giving your output a clear, more, uh, you know, pure tabular format so that, you know, it might easy for you to understand and you can like jot it down with you, like with no problem at all. So here's what our formula would be. This is actually a multi-step process. So we're gonna start off with the question. So the next prompt that you wanna do is, what are the different categories you're gonna break your answer into for more descriptiveness? And the third one will be, uh, you will create one one single tab that includes all your original answer with these new categories separated into different columns. So first of all, you'll just type in your question and the next thing you're going to ask him to categorize those into separate different columns. And the last thing you're going to ask him to create separate tables for their respective columns. So it will be easy for you to understand and jot it down. Okay, so this will be the example that we're going to be doing today. So without wasting any time, let's just get right into it. And I'm going to open my chat GPT here. All right, so following our formula for First of all, I'm going to ask him uh, the question that was in our example with me. I'm going to ask him, what are the main factors of growing a YouTube channel? All right. So as you guys can see, it gave me like eight to nine points of different factors uh, through which you can grow a YouTube channel or you can make one. So it is like in bullet form or points form. So obviously it is not convincing to me. It's not like that engaging. So I want that to be in, you know, uh, a pure tabular form so that it could be very easy for you to understand. I'm just going to insert my next from right here which was in our formula. So I'm going to ask him, what are the main categories? Uh, you can break your answer with these categories separated into different columns. So I want ChatGPT to separate all of these into different columns. So it will be easy for us to understand. Okay, so it did the second part for us. Uh, so it made different columns for us, but I still want that in a uh, more tabular form uh, because I want the headings to be separated. I want their factors to be separated. So let's just uh, write in our third prompt, which was the part of our formula as well. Now I'm gonna ask him to create one table uh, a final table that includes your original answer with these categories separated into different columns. So let's just see what output we're gonna get out of that. All right, so here we go. Uh, now you can see it is looking more convincing, more appealing to us. So these are the different factors that have been separated in, in a tabular form. So for content factors, you need a high quality content, compelling videos, value to target audience and consistency. So these are the few factors you need to be following in your content. And if you want optimization of that, you can do SEO, thumbnails and titles, video optimization, uh, productivity, analytics and insights persistence and patience and if you want to engage audience and you want engagement factors you need to have the audience engagement in that promotion and calibration and consistent branding so yeah as you guys can get an idea from that so now it is very easy for you to understand right so if you are looking for the content factors and if you are like very good with optimization factors so obviously there is a separate column for that if you want to skip that uh, you can easily do that and you can just look into the rest of the factors so yeah, that is basically very easy for us now to understand and follow and very easy to apply as well. All right, yeah, so that will be it for this lecture. I hope you guys liked it and I'll see you in the next one. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to another video of Prompt Engineering. In this video, we'll be discussing about perspective prompting. So before we start the video, let me just demonstrate this lab for you real quick. So we'll be using different perspectives in prompts to get different suitable outputs from ChatGPT. And we'll also be applying prompt engineering techniques to improve our output. So yeah, if we move forward, the first question that should be arising in all of your guys' mind it should be what is basically perspective prompting? 
So the perspective prompting is actually a framework that can broaden your understanding and provide a more comprehensive view of topic at hand. Uh, this can really help you make more informed decisions and have a better understanding of a complex issues. So let's just say if you have a topic and you have three to four guys who have different perspective on that topic. Uh, so obviously every other guy thinking will be different. So basically uh, through this prompting, uh, we can get an idea of different topics uh, through different perspective or different people, right? So this is what uh, this prompting does. So yeah, just like the other uh, prompting, this one also has a proper prompt formula. So first of all, you can use it as a singular perspective. You can uh, simply type in a prompt to please write about uh, a topic. You're gonna give that topic to that from a perspective of viewpoint and you're gonna type in your viewpoint. And then you can also use uh, chat GBD to ask for multiple perspectives, right? So you can just uh, type in a single prompt and you can ask multiple perspectives of multiple uh, characters or people of your single topic, right? So these will be a few of the examples that we'll be doing today. We'll be asking you to discuss about Kickboxer from different perspectives and for the multiple ones, we'll be asking ChatGPT genetically modified organisms, aka GMOs, from different perspectives and we also have given the characters or perspective of the people that we want, which are basically farmer, consumer and geneticist, all right? So let's just not waste any time and let's jump right into our chat DVD. All right, so first of all, starting with the first example, which will be singular perspective. We'll type in the formula for that, that please write about the topic from the perspective of viewpoint. And we already knew our topic, which was kickboxer. All right, so as you guys can see, selling us a complete uh, detailed uh, version of kickboxer from a perspective of kickboxing coach, and which has mastered the fundamentals, which has trained for strength and conditioning, improved flexibility. So those are basically very much kickboxer coach oriented. So if we can type in the same prompt now, but with a different perspective. So this time uh, we'll ask him to write everything the same, but in with the perspective of a human anatomy expert. So let's just see what it, what it will do for us then. All right, so as you guys can see now, so now uh, the points that it has given to us are very much more like of health base and anatomy base. As you guys can see, develop strong shoulders and arms, train neck strength, uh, pay attention to joint health. So these are very much basically, you know, the health based uh, points. So yeah, uh, let's just dive into our next example, which was of multiple perspective. We'll ask him to write an argument against genetically modified organisms that consider multiple perspective. We also asked him to include the names and points of your different perspective, uh, which will be a farmer, a consumer, and geneticist. So we have added different perspectives, but uh, just in a single prompt. So let's just see if it can do that for us or not. Yeah, uh, so as you guys can see, it just gave us uh, three different perspectives. Perspective one was a farmer, the second one was a consumer, and third was zone analysis. Yeah, so from here it is a lot clear to us. So you can use three different perspectives or as many perspectives as you want in a single prompt and it will work that out for you with no problem at all. So yeah, uh, that was basically it for our today's video. I hope you guys liked it. If you do, uh, don't forget to check out our more videos and I'll catch you guys in the next one. See you, bye bye. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to another video of Prompt Engineering course, where in this video we'll be discussing about what is constructive printing prompting. So yeah, before starting this video, let me just demonstrate this lab to you real quickly. We'll be using prompts to get output from ChatGPT in effective and more constructive way for better understanding. And also we'll be applying prompt engineering techniques to improve our output. Moving forward, uh, we'll first of all discuss what is basically constructive predict prompting is. So constructive critic prompting is a very effective framework that allows you to receive objective and expert feedback on your writing. It serves as a valuable tool to identify areas of improvement and obtain constructive criticism akin to having an expert copy your writing coach by your side. So basically how it works, uh, you first of all give any objective or any uh, business plan or any, you know, career related questions to chat GPT and you ask it to give it like a constructive criticism on that. So it will basically act as a personal coach or like a teacher. So it will tell you what are the pros and cons of that thing, what are the 
advantages and disadvantages of that industry or any situation or any question that you want to ask so basically uh in short it's gonna guide you upon all that and for and it will finalize that for you so whether you you need to go for that or not based upon your requirements or conditions so yeah basically it acts as a personal coach or a teacher you can say in short so yeah like every other type of prompt engineering techniques this one also has a chrome formula so obviously uh if you need any type of a uh, constructive criticism or any advice from chat gpd you will first say him to be an expertise or maybe you know a critic a teacher for that so yeah just like that you will first of all guide chat gpd you'll say i want you to act as an expert and critic in the subject of dash 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 whatever your industry or whatever your question is then you say criticize my content paste it below convince me why it's bad and give me a constructive criticism on how it should be improved so it's very clear till here then you'll say for some context my product or service is dash dash you will say my whatever your product or service is then you'll also uh, give detail and all the demographics of your product as well and then at the end you will give a purpose like what is basically your purpose or content goal is so basically you will give every possible information to chat gpd first of all you'll tell which industry it is uh, what are your product or services what are your details on that and then you'll say what are your basically goals like what do you want to achieve or what do you want to extract from that so basically these are a few of the information you have to give to chat gpt first of all and that it will analyze and it will finalize all that and it will give you a final decision and type of a constructive criticism on whether you are right about that or not and if you are right it will guide you according to that and if you are not right it will act as a personal coach or personal teacher uh, to constructively criticize you and tell you the right option or you can say a right decision for that so yeah it's very easy so moving forward this will be the example that we'll be doing for today don't worry uh, with the length of that example it's very easy that i've just added a few more information just to you know get a very accurate output from our uh, chat gpt so if you will follow these type of format in your example i'm pretty much sure you will get a perfect and accurate output as you will expect from your chat gpt so you say i want you uh, to act as an expert and critic in the subject of fashion so first of all we choose our industry as fashion so you'll say criticize my content pasted below convince me why it's bad and give me constructive criticism on how it should be improved for cost for some context my product description is for my clothing brand for 20 to 30 year old uh, eco-friendly customer which uh, appreciate unique modern aesthetics so yeah this is basically your demographic or you can say detail on that so basically you want a uh, 20 to 30 year old eco-friendly customers uh, which obviously appreciate you know unique modern aesthetics so this is basically your uh, you can say them graphic or uh, details of your uh, whole industry so yeah basically we have all the four things that we discussed in our prompt formula just right here in our example so without any further ado let's just dive right into the chat gpt and let's apply your example right away all right so yeah i'm back with my chat gpt and what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna paste my example right here and we'll just review it once again whether it is right or not all right just looking fine we have all the possible context we want chat gpt to expertise or advice is about so let's just enter and let's just see what output is going to give it to us all right so before reading it and just uh, you know getting an overviewing of all this text that we have achieved from chat gpt we can get an idea this is not some kind of uh just a regular text right with every text it just gave us a proper advice and just gave us a suggested improvement for every possible expertise or advice that chat gpt has given to us so yeah this is basically looking very useful if you ask me so just just quickly review and see what it's saying so it says as an expert and critic in subject of fashion i will analyze and critique each piece of your content and make constructive criticism on how it can be improved to effectively uh, engage your targeted audience so yeah it's just ensured us in our starting paragraph so it will act as an expertise and it will critic us in a proper constructive way not like arguing or you know not any not in any destructive way so it's like introducing our latest addition to our eco-friendly clothing collection the modern vibes t-shirt with the phrase introducing our latest edition indicate that you have a new product and this year's suggested improvement is discover the epitome of sustainable style with a modern vibes t-shirt the first improvement is suggested us you know you need to discover a new epitome epitome that is trendy or you know sustainable 
according to the taste of uh, many people should be modern wise, right? So yeah, by uh, reading all this, you can get an idea like right here, chat GPT is not only giving us like simple output and question and it's not like it's just answering our questions, right? It's more of like acting as a personal coach or you can say a personal teacher is advising on every point like you should do this instead of this, right? So this is basically what constructive criticism is. This is exactly what we wanted chat GPT to do for us, right? All right, yeah, so that will be it for this lecture. I hope you guys liked it and I'll see you in the next one. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to another video of Prompt Engineering Course, where in this video we'll be discussing about comparative prompting. Before starting this video, let me just demonstrate this lab to you guys real quickly. We'll be using prompts to get output from ChatGPT in effective way to compare between two things. And we'll also be applying prompt engineering techniques to improve our outputs. So without wasting any time, let's just discuss first of all, what is comparative prompting? So comparative prompting highlights key similarities and differences across various factors, uh, which can help you make more informed decisions and gain a deeper understanding of two strengths and weaknesses of the two options. Let's just say if you have two topics, or you can say if you have two decisions, you want to go for one decision, you want to go for another, you're not sure about that, right? So what you can say, as chat GPT to compare between those two topics or those two things and you know give us a complete uh, key similarities differences various factors uh, on uh, what things uh, depend upon and you know many other uh, reasoning and information like that which can basically help you to get a deeper understanding and you can get to know about the strengths and weaknesses of those two options that is basically what comparative prompting is it basically compares between two things and tells us which one is good and which one is bad all right and like every other type this one also has a prompt formula you will say please compare and contrast the following test examples outline the similarities and differences qualitative characteristics, quantitative factors, functionality, impact, key takeaways, and other factors into one table. And here are the two pieces of content. You will paste one content on one side and content toward the other side. So basically, this is a very much a deep comparative, you can say, prompting that I've used for this topic in order to get you, you know, understand a like better idea of what this actually do. So I've also tell it, you know, tell the uh, similarities, differences, qualitative, quantitative characteristics, functionality, impact, key takeaways, everything, you know, and I've also command or prompt it to separate both of those into one and other table. So this is also more like of a tabular uh, prompting as well, you can say that because I've also prompt uh, it to uh, give me all the answers into separate tables. So these will be uh, the example that I will be doing for you guys in this video today. So without wasting any time, let's get this video started. All right, so here I am uh, on the chat GPT. And first of all, we'll insert our prompt formula. So here it is. And it will say, please compare and contrast the following test examples, all in a similarity difference. And this is basically the same exact uh, prompt formula. And now uh, from the examples, I'm just going to input my two pieces of content, which were in the first example was uh, like difference between you can say more of a like philosophy and business design of Apple and Microsoft. So here I'm going to put my example and let's just hit enter and see what it will do for us. All right, yeah, so as you guys can see uh, by our prompt formula that we put, this is actually a very nice and very hierarchical way of differentiating or you can say comparing two things. So first of all, it just generated a table of aspect for us, then Apple and Microsoft, which, which were basically two of our topics, or you can say headings uh, that we want to compare between two. So similarities, uh, first of all, are innovation focus, global presence, then we have differences. So we have two separate columns of similarities and differences as well, which is a really nice thing. And we have like differences in design, ecosystem integration, business model. Then we have qualitative characteristics, which we also demand in our formula as well so then we have some of the qualitative factors then we have some of the impacts key takeaways so basically this is a whole very hierarchical and very structured form of comparing or you can say differentiating between two things 
So yeah, and this is also one of the example of tabular formatting as well, which we did in a for previous videos too. So yeah, by this example, you can get how useful comparative prompting can be. And you can use this example in any of the differences, or you can say if you want to differentiate between two companies, two things, or you can say um, two of any brands or anything like that, basically, it will help you out a lot better than it gives you a very you can say a type of a paragraph type of a response or output so this is basically very nice to see if your eyes and you can you know just use it this is this is a very basically a useful information all right yeah so that will be it for this lecture i hope you guys liked it and i'll see you in the next one hey guys what's up welcome back to another video of prompt engineering course where in this video we'll be discussing about reverse prompting so before starting this video let me just demonstrate this lab to you guys real quickly so we'll be using text this time or you can say any piece of writing to get output from chat gpt in a very effective way to get prompts of that writing so this time we won't be using prompt we'll be using text instead and we'll be asking chat gpt to give us prompts for that and also be applying prompt engineering techniques to improve our output as well always so before diving into our lab uh, let me just first of all brief you guys about like what is basically reverse prompting is so seeing the definition reverse prompt engineering is the process of creating a prompt from a given text or code which i just told you guys about and this framework uh, also offers incredible insights into how to effectively reverse engineer any piece of content so if I can tell you guys once again, this is basically a very useful technique or method you can say in which now, uh, as you guys seen previously, we use like different prompts to get, you know, different kind of output uh, depending upon the scenario or situation. We asked ChatGPT, you know, about different techniques, different advices, different situations. Like we give all kinds of situations to ChatGPT before. But now this time we are doing something which is entirely different from our previous processes. So we are this time picking up any type of, you can and say text or context from internet and we'll be giving it to chat gpt and we'll be asking it like what types of prompt or what prompt should it have to get the exact output out of which we are putting it right now so this is basically just kind of a reverse process so yeah like all the techniques or types this one also has a prompt formula if you're not going to put like these formulas obviously there will be some errors in the in the output so i suggest you guys to use this exact formula if you want the exact output that i'll be showing you guys today so yeah that is basically our today's example i picked out this text or you can see a kind of an article from internet about apple airpods and their features all telling me so yeah i'll i'll give chat gpt the same exact output as my prompt this time and i will demand chat gpt to give me the prompts of that and also i'll be proving you guys you know i'll be putting the uh, those prompts at the end once again just to show you guys that it will give me the same exact article or you can say paragraph that we have put it in the beginning so yeah without any further ado let's just dive right into our chat gpt all right so i'm right here with my chat gpt open so let's just first of all uh write our first part of the formula it was let's talk about reverse prompt engineering so first of all we'll fetch information about prompt engineering from chat gpt so let's just say what output is going to give it to us okay yeah so as you guys can see it gave me all the possible information about chat gpt and it said there are a few of the general approaches as well so yeah we're not going to waste any time because we already discussed those so let's just dive right into our second part of the formula where i'll be asking can you give me a simple example of reverse prompt engineering so let's see what example is going to give it to us all right yeah so as you guys can see just gave us a given uh text and it says it's reverse prompt engineering will be these these prompts and that basically means so you know if you're gonna put these prompts so you'll get this kind of text right so this is exactly what uh, reverse prompt engineering is so yeah let's uh, not waste any more time here and let's move forward to the third part of our formula where now we'll say great uh, can you create a very technical reverse prompt engineering template so now we're demanding template from chat gpt All right, yeah, so now as you guys can see, just gave me a template for the whole reverse prompt engineering technique. So now for the last part of our formula, I'll be inserting my text here and see uh, what kind of reverse prompts it just gave it to us. And we'll also be seeing like whether it's working for us or not. So yeah. All right, yeah, so now I'm done with the last part of our formula along with my text as well, which was about Apple AirPods. Uh, and and its features so yeah let's uh, just hit enter and see what kind of prompts uh, in the form of output is going to give it to us all 
All right, so it just gave me a little bit of information. It says uh, your given text was this, and for that it gave me a reverse prompt, and which is this. So yeah, as you guys can see, it's working for now very accurately. So let's just copy this reverse prompt that just gave it to us and insert it into the chat GPT input area and see whether it will give me uh, the same text or not. So let's just try. Let's just put it into our new chat. All right, yeah. So yeah, as you guys can see, it's working absolutely fine. So with that prompt, we were demanding the information about the Apple AirPods along with its features as well. It just gave me an, a little bit of information about the AirPods and it's told me about the features like availability of wireless charging. Uh, then we have uh, integration with Siri. And then we have uh, with, uh, using AirPods with all devices of Breeze. And you know, it just showed me all the possible features that the AirPods have. So yeah, this is basically reverse prompting does. It basically takes your given text or any kind of information that you want chat GPT to, you know, to reverse it and give it prompts of that text to you instead. So yeah, that is very uh, useful kind of a feature, if you can say of chat GPT uh, to us. All right, yeah, so that will be it for this lecture. I hope you guys liked it and I'll see you in the next one. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to another video of Prompt Engineering Course, where in this video we'll be discussing about RGC prompting. So before starting this video, let me just demonstrate this lab to you. We'll be using prompts to get outputs from chat GPT in an effective way to get our desired results or desired outputs. And yeah, also uh, we'll be applying prompt engineering techniques to improve our output. So yeah, before starting this video, let me just tell you what RGC means, what is this abbreviation and you know, what's the meaning of that. So RGC prompting is actually named as role result, goal, contact, and constraint prompting. This is actually a very effective technique to present a robust structure that can be applied universally to any input and intended output. And the objective is to establish a standardized format that optimizes the framing for chat GPT and thereby enhances its performance across a broad spectrum of input. So what it basically is, uh, this is actually kind of, you can say, a constructive critic prompting that we just did in one of our previous videos. So in this prompting, uh, you get to give ChatGPT a role, goal, contacts, and constraint, like limitation of any situation or anything. So ChatGPT will monitor all those things that you gave. It's your role, context, constraint, and everything like that. It will monitor those and it will analyze those and give you a desired result or a desired output that you want. And like it can be any work, any task, any kind of format that you want ChatGPT to work on and give that result to you. So this is basically RGC prompting. RGC means like ChatGPT is working now, like you're giving it a role, right? You're giving it the goal, you are giving it a context, a constraint, and at the end, it will give you a result for that. Okay, so yeah, just like every other prompt, it also has a formula. So you'll type in you are an expert in the role whatever your role and you'll say create a result then you'll type in your result and you say then you say the content is then you type in your context as well and at the end you also tell chat gpt few of the limitations or constraint that you want chat gpt to be careful okay so these will be the example that i'll be assigning chat gpt so the role i'll be assigning would be an expert marketer and the result i want chat gpt to work on will be Create me an email ending with a call to action and the goal will be to drive sales for my product and the context on that I want is to uh, the email for my online audience of entrepreneurs. So this is basically my context on that and the constraint or the limitation in that I want is the email should be friendly and less than 200 words. All right, yes, so without any further ado, let's just jump right into our chat GPT. All right, so here I am with my chat GPT open and I'm also typed in my example with a role as an expert marketer and with a goal to write me an email. And yeah, and I want that for my audience of entrepreneurs, that is my limitation. Yeah, so let's just quickly hit enter and see what kind of output is gonna give it to us on that. All right, yeah, so as you guys can see, just created a whole format of an email for us. So you say hi, uh, then you're typing your first name, then you're saying hope this email finds you well. Uh, so a little bit of a welcoming text at the end. So yeah, these are actually kind of a message for entrepreneur like, don't miss out on this incredible opportunity to storm your business. So yeah, 
I told Chat GPT that this will be for the audience of entrepreneurs and this will be like, you know, uh, to boost our business or sales, you can say, right? So yeah, uh, this email uh, seems to be absolutely perfect for what kind of desired output we wanted. All right, yeah, so that will be it for today's video, guys. I hope you liked it and I'll see you guys in my next video. Take care. Bye-bye. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to another video of Prompt Engineering Course, where in this video we'll be discussing about our last type of prompting, which is I want you to act as prompting. So before starting this video, let me just demonstrate this lab. You'll be using prompts for a specific role to chat GPT to get outputs in a very effective way to get desired results. And we'll also be applying prompt engineering techniques to improve our output. So before we move further, let's just talk about what is basically I want you to act as prompting is. So this is actually a very unique name of this type of prompting, but uh, don't worry, we'll just find out what is basically is actually. So this framework represents a robust structure that can be applied universally uh, to any input and intended output. So you're selling, you know, you can apply this type of prompting to literally any uh, input and output, doesn't matter what topic you want, what kind of situation in you are. So you can apply this anywhere you want. And the objective is to establish a standardized format that optimizes the framing for ChatGPT by giving it a specific role in order for it to get your work done quite efficiently. So basically, if you see the name, I want you to act as prompting. So by the name, you can get an idea. This is kind of some kind of a role reversal uh, type of prompting where you assign a role to chat GPT and you say, I need you to act as this person or according to this situation. And it's gonna act like that and give you a specific output or some kind of advice or solution for that problem that you want ChatGPT to answer. All right, so just like every other type, this one also has a prompt formula. So obviously, uh, if you if you are assigning a task, a role to ChatGPT, you, you need to give uh, a little bit of information first of all. So you say, I want you to act as, so whatever uh, the role you want to give, you're gonna enter that and you'll say, I'll give you my, then you'll give this some details about what do you want, what exactly is your situation, everything like that. You will then, then you'll assign a task like what you want ChatGPT to work on exactly. And then you'll also give information in a tone style, whatever your tone style is. Then you say the important details are, then you'll give a little bit of more information. And at the end, you'll say, refine your output as needed. All right, so this will be the example. So let's just not waste any time and let's just dive right into our chat GPT. All right, so I'm back here with my chat GPT open. So let's just type in my example right here in which basically I'm prompting chat GPT to uh, act as a virtual doctor and say, I'll describe my symptoms and you will provide me a diagnosis and treatment plan. So you should should only reply with the explanation, diagnosis and treatment plan and nothing else. And then we have some details. My important details are I have been experiencing a headache and dizziness for the last few days. What would be the cause? So yeah, let's just enter and see what kind of output is going to give it to us. All right, so here we are. It gave us the output as headache and dizziness can have various causes and it's important to consider multiple factors. So from this, if you can read all this, you can get an idea like right here, chat GPT is not working as some kind of an AI. It's, it's, we have assigned it a role. So right here is working as you can say a virtual doctor where it's explaining us things. Obviously saying if you are uh, experiencing some kind of uh, uh, dizziness or whatever we said, you know, in uh, in the above prompt. So you say it could be some kind of a migraine problem and it told us about the symptoms. So this is actually a very useful type of uh, technique or type you can say where, you know, you can assign a specific or you can say a very accurate role to chat GPT and it's going to answer you or give an output to you in that way, being that role that you have assigned it to it. All right, yeah, so that will be it for this lecture. I hope you guys liked it and I'll see you in the next one. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to another video of Prompt Engineering Course, where in this video we'll be discussing about prompting in code snippets. So before starting this video, let me just demonstrate this lab to you guys very quickly. We'll be using prompt engineering techniques to get output from AI tools in a very effective way to get desired outputs. And also we'll be applying prompt engineering techniques to improve our output as always. So yeah, before jumping right into our lab, let me just first brief you guys about what is basically prompting in code snippets is. So prompting in code snippets is an AI pair programmer that offers auto-complete style suggestions uh, as you code. Uh, you can receive suggestions from tools like GitHub Copilot and AWS code whisper etc 
either uh, by starting to write the code you want to use or by writing a natural language comment describing what you want the code to do. So if you have seen our previous videos where we were discussing about AWS Code Whisper and GitHub Copilot. So this is basically a very good example of how you can use prompt engineering techniques because obviously uh, we use a lot of prompts in that in order to get our real life examples done in order to tackle daily life scenarios. So yeah, uh, in this video as well, I'll be explaining you guys how you can implement and integrate that into your IDEs. Obviously, if you want, you can do all this work in chat GBD. But, uh, you know, doing coding in chat GPT cannot be very accurate and efficient because uh, chat GPT doesn't provide you very accurate code because most of the time in my usage, I happen to find so many errors uh, in the chat GPT code. So for that, if you just want to use AI in your code snippets or you want AI to help you in your coding. So the best way for that is you can just integrate AI tools such as GitHub Copilot or AWS Code Whisper into your IDEs and that will work as a charm in that. Moving forward, these are the most common tools of AI for prompt engineering, which I just told you guys. That is AWS Code Whisper and GitHub Copilot. And this will be a few examples uh, that we'll be doing. We'll be doing how we can solve our daily life problems by using AWS Code Whisper and GitHub Copilot. So without further ado, uh, let's just dive right into our lab and let me just brief you guys about how you can do that. All right, so first of all, I want to tell you guys how you can integrate AWS Code Whisper or GitHub Copilot into your IDEs. And for the best IDE, you can go for Visual Studio Code and the process for both of those are pretty much similar. Uh, you just need to go into uh, your Visual Studio Code. After that, you need to go into your extension section. You need to search in AWS and AWS toolkit will appear after that you just need to install that and you know as soon as it will be installed the AWS option will appear on your left bottom corner over there and you can just uh, click on this option and your code whisper will be ready to function just need to hit start option and yeah this is how you can set up aws code whisper or github copilot github copilot procedure is quite similar as well you just need to uh, go into the extension search and github copilot and you just need to install that extension and it will start working for you very efficiently all right uh, moving forward starting off with our first example we'll be asking github copilot uh, to generate us a program to prove the quadratic formula so let me just type here a comment all right, I'm going to hit enter. All right, it's going to first of all import CMAP. So that is basically the library that we need to have in order to get the mathematical formulas work. All right, so I'm going to hit tab once again. All right, seems like so our code has been completed. Let me just save this file first of all into our desktop. Okay, first of all, it's asking me to enter the value of A because obviously we had three inputs, A, B, and C. So I'm going to just do the value of A will be 2. And let's put the value of B as 3 and C as 4. All right, yeah. So as you guys can see, it gave me two solutions. That is because obviously in a quadratic formula, we get two solutions. One is a real one and the other one is an imaginary one. So yeah, uh, seems like our code is working perfectly fine. So let's just move to the next example for today, which can actually be a mini project that can be a, one of your real life example that you can use by prompt engineering using GitHub Copilot and AWS Code Whisper. So the topic of that mini project is going to be password generator. And these will be the prompts that we'll be using in, in the form of prompt engineering for the mini project. So yeah, without any further ado, let's just jump right into this example. So as as I told you guys earlier, these will be few of the prompts or comments I'll be using for today in order to create our project of password generator. All right, so first of all, for the password generator, obviously we need to import uh, some random and some strings. So obviously string will be uh, for the letters and all those characters and random will be obviously we need a random library as well in order to get the password because obviously we'll be needing a unique password anytime. We don't want the same password to come up again and again, right? So first of all, I'm going to give it give it a comment. All right, so it's just imported random for us. We're going to accept it by hitting tab. Let's just move to our second prompt now, which we're going to ask him to define us a function of a password generator. Okay, I'm going to hit enter. Okay, so it's defined a function of password generator for me. All right, it's working fine. We need a list of letters. So I'm going to ask him to create a list of letters for me. Okay, so here's the list of letters generated for me using string. And the next thing I'm going to ask him to create a list of numbers for me, I'm going to hit a comment. Okay, so here's the number list that is generated for me as well. I'm going to accept it by hitting tab. 
Okay, and what's the last thing we need? We need a list of special characters, right? All right, I'm gonna hit the comment of that as well. Okay, I'm gonna accept that as well. All right. Okay, so we are all done with the list of letters, list of numbers, and list of special characters, right? All right, so the next thing I need to do is I need to merge all of those characters in a one string, right? Like in a one function, right? So I'm gonna do just that. I'm gonna ask him to create a list of all these characters, all right? I want all those to be merged in one place. Okay, so as you guys can see, just merge all the characters from me, letters plus numbers for special characters in uh, one function right so that's what that's exactly what I want in okay so the last thing that we need to do uh, is we need to create a loop and what will that be for so the loop we'll be needing is because obviously we need to generate like password again and again right so we need to create a loop for that and for that we have to make sure as well that you know it shows us like unique password every time so I'm just gonna hit the next comment to that to create a loop to generate a password Okay, so it's implemented for loop for me. That's exactly what we wanted. And it's also uh, integrated the command to show me random. That's where the random has, you know, uh, come to work. So it's going to choose a random characters, uh, alphabets, and merge them all and show me that as a password, as a unique password every time. Okay, okay so the last uh, comment, I think we will be asking him to return password. Obviously, because we had to return the values as well. All right, so I think we are done with all of that. Just we need to, I think, print the uh, password generated that we just defined, you know, uh, in the first step. So, yeah, we're going to do print password and it will be a print password generator. All right, that's right. That's fine. Okay, so I guess we are all done with our mini project now. Let me just save this file first of all. All right, so for the output now. All right, yeah, so as you guys can see right here, it just showed me an output of a strong, unique password that we want exactly. So yeah, let me just go ahead and uh, just check the output once again, just to see if like whether the loop was working fine or not. We're gonna hit again, obviously, showing the uh, like different password next time. Let me just hit, let me just try again and again and again and again and again all right so you can see it every time it's showing me different unique password so yeah we can get an idea from here like this project is working absolutely fine if you need any uh unique password a strong password that you want uh, the program or code to generate that for you you don't want to do that yourself so obviously that is a very cool program in my uh opinion you can use uh to generate a strong unique password all right yeah so that will be it for this lecture i hope you guys liked it and i'll see you in the next one hey guys what's up welcome back to a new topic a new module of prompt engineering course where uh in this module we'll be discussing what are the few real life examples or scenarios you can do via chat gpt in prompt engineering so for the first example today i'll be telling you guys how you can do language translation by using chat gpt in a very effective way we'll be doing simple examples to complex examples as well we'll be discussing both of these types and the next thing we'll be doing is uh, we'll also be seeing uh, how you can summarize your text how you can summarize like a single line text or maybe a whole 200 or 300 lines text very easily by a single prompt via chat gpt so these are basically very basic example that i uh, wanted to tell you first in this module so for that we don't need any specific prompt formula so without further ado let's just dive right into our chat gpt all right so for the first example i have taken a simple text uh, which is actually a definition you can say of prompt engineering and i have prompt chat gpt to translate this text into spanish just to get you guys an idea of what basically we are doing so let's just hit enter and see what output is going to give it to us all right, so yeah, as you guys can see, it just created the output of the same exact text into Spanish language without any problem or hustle. So for the simple text, it will work very efficiently and very accurately. So maybe if some of you guys are wondering, like, this is the exact same thing that Google does as well. So why we need to use ChatGPT for that? So let's just say if you want to pick the same text and you want to change it uh, into three to four different languages, like in one shot, right? So for that, uh, if you're using Google, Google, you have to do it again and again and again but in ChatGPT, you can just simply uh, write those languages and it will do for you without any problem just in one shot so now you can see we have from ChatGPT to translate the same exact paragraph but for now it won't be in just one language we said to translate it into Spanish as well as French Arabic and German right so yeah let's just see if ChatGPT can do it for us 
All right, yeah, so as you guys can see, it just translated that paragraph into four different languages just in one shot without any problem. If you guys would have been doing this uh, in Google, so you'll be like selecting languages again and again, so it'll be t it will take a lot of time, right? But in ChatGPT, you can just simply uh, put in that paragraph and you can say it to translate that into dash 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 languages as many as you want and it will do it for you very efficiently. So yeah, this is actually a very useful uh, technique or a real life example that you can apply to your situation with the help of chat GPT. So yeah, moving forward to our next uh, real life example, I told you guys uh, we'll also be discussing how you can summarize uh, like text, you can summarize simple text as well as the complex text uh, using chat GPT very easily in very effective way in a very hierarchical structure like just how you like uh, So let's just dive into the chat GPT again and let me brief you guys about that example as well All right, so for summarizing text I just looked up on Google about an article related to prompt engineering So I'm just gonna go ahead and copy that and I just want you know to read that in a very uh, summarized way where I can you know read a very little and understand exactly what it's gonna say so I'm just gonna copy that and paste into my chat GPT and prompt it to summarize this whole article for me in simple words all right so I just prompt a uh, chat GPT to summarize the whole text or article for me in simple words and I also prompt it to summarize in the form of bullets where I can understand it very easily without any problem. Let's just hit enter and see. Alright, so yeah, as you guys can see, it was a very long article and with the help of chat GPT and a very simple prompt of summarizing, it just formed that into a very nicely bullet form where I can read that and I can understand that very easily. These are all some of the important points that were uh, given in the article. So yeah, this is very easy to understand. So yeah, that will be it for uh, today's video guys I hope you liked it and I'll be back with more videos of this module prompt engineering course. See you. Bye. Bye. Hey guys What's up? Welcome back to another video of prompt engineering real life examples module Where in this video today we'll be discussing our second example Which is use of chat GPT in social media platform and it can be a use in blogs posts scripts and etc So let's just say if you are a social media influencer if you are an Instagrammer or any content creator now It's gotten a lot better because uh, you can use chat GPT to write your blog you can use chat GPT now to to create posts for you in a very unique and efficient way and if you are a youtuber or any content creator you can now write the whole scripts of your video or content that you want to upload and make for your audience so yeah without any further ado let's just dive right into our practical lab example where i'll be showing you guys uh, how you can implement those in chat gpt so let's go all right, so for our very first example, let's just say if you are an Instagram influencer or user and you want to write blogs for your audience. And for this example, I have prompted ChatGPT to write me a blog related to a topic of healthy food uh, for my Instagram audience. So let's just hit enter and see what kind of output is going to give it to us. All right, so yeah, as you guys can see, uh, it just created a very beautiful structure of blog for me with some introduction and some heading the power of whole foods, balancing macronutrients and mindful eating and all other those important headings and topic that should be included uh, in the blog of healthy food. So this is actually a very useful technique. Without this chat GPT, I had no idea about healthy food, how to write it, how to structure it, unless I had to do a lot and a lot of research on that. But you know, with the help of this chat GPT, it has done my work of hours uh, with just one click. So yeah, moving forward, let's just go for our second example, which I told you, let's just say if you are any content creator or if you have any Facebook account or any like if you have any Twitter account and you want to create a very unique post on some specific topic to just you know impress your audience so how you can use chat GPT for that all right so for that I gave an example create a post for my Twitter audience on the topic of global warming so let's just see what output is going to give it to us all right, so yeah, as you guys can see, it's created a very beautiful post uh, for us with all those cute, cute emojis and everything. And how good it's looking to our eyes. It's very structural with very beautiful headings and, you know, all those important points as well that should be there on the post or topics such as global warming. 
And yeah, moving forward, let's just go to our third example, which was uh, if let's just say if you are a YouTuber or content creator and you want to make your videos, but you're not good at scripting and all. So how you can use ChatGPT uh, to make you the whole, literally all A to Z script for your YouTube videos. So in this example, I have prompt ChatGPT to make me a script for my YouTube video on topic use of technology in 2023 so let's just see what uh script is going to provide us all right so as you guys can see from this whole output it just created a very hierarchical script for us it says opening shot will be you will be stranding in front of a modern background and the second segment will be the rise of artificial intelligence then it just gave us a few of the segments as well then it also provide few of the in-between action that we need to perform to make our video more engaging to our audience. So it's a cut to footage of AI powered detail devices in action. Then we have segment two of that, segment three, four, and then we have the closing shot along with some uh, instruction of end screen with links to subscribe and previous videos. So yeah, as you guys can see how useful and how unique this uh, feature of ChatGPT is. So now you don't have to worry about, you know, doing the scripting and all. Obviously, you don't need to copy all of that. You you can take a very good help from uh, ChatGPT for, to, uh, to make your script and you can always edit that according to your situation or need but still this is a very useful and a very important feature of ChatGPT. so yeah that will be it for uh, today's video guys i hope you liked it and i'll be back with more real life examples of prompt engineering and i'll catch you guys in the next one see you hey guys what's up welcome back to another video of prompt engineering real life examples module uh where in this video we'll be discussing about how you can use chat gpt for job scenario like you can generate your resumes and also you can get help from chat gpt to help you find a suitable job for you all right moving forward this real life example has a specific prompt formula obviously if you want to make your resume aka cv and uh, if you want to apply for any job so obviously you need to provide some details some personal information to chat gpt through which it will help you create a proper resume or help you find a suitable job for you so these will be few uh, of the details that you need to provide to chat GPT. that will be your age your field your experience skills and you know at the end uh, you can also provide some additional uh, engaging details that you want ChatGPT to include. Uh, all right, so let's jump right into our practical example. I'll be showing you guys how you can implement this. All right, so here I am uh, with my ChatGPT open. So first of all, we'll from ChatGPT to create a resume for me. And I've already uh, provided information that I, I am 30 years old. I have 12 years of experience in content creation. And then I provided skills. My skills are music, composition, production, recording, mixing, mastering, songwriting, film, and you know, some of the creative production as well. And then we have provided experience. My experience is working for uh, Moment Films for four years, for your answering for eight years. And then at the end, uh, the information I told you, you can also say ChatGPT to include a few of the additional details to just to enhance your resume and to make it look more engaging so i said please include that so that will be our prompt and let's just hit enter and see the output for that all right so yeah as you guys can see it's generated a very structural format of how a resume should be and provided all the necessary information starting off with your name address city phone number email address and then we have the heading of objective then we have summary experience and you know that is looking pretty good so with that now you can get an idea you can use chat gpt in order to create a resume for you or a cv so now what i'm gonna do again for my next example which was how you can uh, use chat gpt help you find a job or advise you about what job you can go for or what jobs uh, you can apply for so let's just enter the same prompt and instead of write me a resume, I'll change that to. All 
All right, yeah, so as you guys can see, uh, first of all, you just gave me uh, a job suggestion with the title Multimedia Producer, uh, according to the information or detail I provided to Chad GPT. Then we have a description of the job, and then we have responsibilities that I need to uh, follow, or you can say adapt, uh, in order to get going uh, in a job. And then we have few of the requirements the job will be demanding from its employees. And then we have uh, the whole methodology that Chad GPT has provided, how you can basically apply to the job so yeah as you guys can see this is actually a very useful uh, example or technique you can say where ChatGPT can now uh, provide us or you can say advise us uh, to help us find a good job according to our resume or you can say according to our skills or experience so yeah that will be it for uh today's video guys i hope it was helpful for you and uh, i'll be back with more real life examples of chat gpt and see you on the next one bye bye hey guys what's up welcome back to another video of prompt engineering real life examples module where in this video today we'll be uh, discussing about a real life example like how you can use uh, chat gpt to grow your businesses and in that there can be uh, various factors you can ask questions to grow your businesses such as you can ask about the strategies about business advices and various factors that i'll be showing you guys in our lab today so yeah without further ado let's just dive right into the chat gpt and and just do our example all right so here i have chat gpt with me open and as you guys know uh to grow your businesses uh there can be various factors various questions and queries that you can ask chat gpt let's just say uh you are running a coffee shop or a coffee business and you're having some uh, problems in that you're not getting many customers you're having trouble with marketing and you know you're having a hard time paying rent and you know there are so many problems you're unable to uh, afford uh, to run that business so with that you can ask ask multiple questions from chat GPT like how you can grow your businesses and by giving all the problems all the prompts according to the, uh, the difficulties or problems that you're facing so for the first example let's just say uh, you're having problem finding customers so let's just ask chat GPT about it and see how uh, it's gonna help us in that so I'm gonna write here So I'll be saying I'm running a coffee shop business, but I'm having serious problems finding customers. So what kind of strategies uh, you can give me to help uh, increase my customers? So let's just enter and see what kind of strategies or advice is going to give it to us. All right, yeah, so as you guys can see, it just gave us a lot of strategies uh, with different uh, techniques or you can say different approaches that we can follow. First of all, it's saying increased customer traffic in a coffee shop requires a combination of effective marketing strategies and creating a welcoming atmosphere. Here are some strategies to help you increase your customer base. First, you say you need to develop a strong online presence. Then we should offer unique promotions. All right, that is a good strategy in my view. And it says partner with local businesses. That is actually very effective. And then say host events and workshops, enhance your ambience, offer quality products and exceptional services, utilize local partnerships and collaborations, engage with community, collect customer feedback, monitor your competition. So yeah, as you guys can see, there are quite a few very uh, useful strategies that ChatGPT has given to us. And by following that, by applying that, we can actually uh, get a lot of impact in our business. It may help us back to uh, running normal. So yeah, let's just go with our second case scenario. Let's just say uh, we are having problems with marketing, uh, online, social media and stuff. Actually, I don't I don't have any knowledge about social media. So I'm just going to ask ChatGPT how we can, uh, you know, increase our marketing strategies through social media and online posts and something like that so let's just see what chat is going to say about it so i said i'm running a coffee shop business but i'm having serious problems with online marketing so what kind of strategies you can give me to help me increase my online customers so let's just see what uh advice or strategy is going to give us give it to us for that all right, yeah, so as you guys can see for the online marketing strategies, it says you need to optimize your website, all right? Uh, so that is actually quite useful. Then it's an impl implement search engine optimization, which is also known as SEO. And then it's a leverage uh, local directories and review sites, develop engaging content, utilize social media effectively, collaborate with influencers, online advertising, email marketing as well. Then we 
need to collaborate with local bloggers and publications. That is actually very important and effective strategy in my case. Then it's a monitor and analyze results. So yeah, as you guys can get an idea, no matter what problem or what kind of query or whatever strategy you want to know, ChatGPT is now here for you to help you solve that problem. By that, I hope you get an idea how you can help boost your business or if your business is slow, it's not going normal. So by the help of ChatGPT and AI, you can help find many strategies to help you boost your business. But uh, in the end, you might be wondering like why we need to use ChatGPT. Like obviously you can, you, you can see all of these strategies on Google as well. So why AI or chat GBD for that? So for that, uh, the answer is you can find answer to your queries uh, online and Google. But the thing is, if you want to be more precise, if you want chat GBD to act as a advisor or a guide for you, so you can get those advices and, you know, strategies from chat GBD according to your situation. Okay, so that will be it for uh, today's video. I hope you liked it and I'll see you guys in the next real life example of prompt engine. Hey guys. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to another video of Prompt Engineering Real Life Examples module. Uh, where in this video, we'll be discussing about how you can use Chat GPT in traveling. Like, if you are a person who likes to travel a lot and you know who get lost sometimes with some traveling techniques or traveling strategies, or maybe if you are a professional traveler and you do this for a living, so you can use artificial intelligence in the form of Chat GPT uh, to help you do a lot of tasks for you, to help you do lots and lots of research uh, for you. So yeah, uh, let's just dive right into our chat GPT and see how you can get help from chat GPT in that. All right, so here I have chat GPT with me open. And for the first example, let's just say if you are a personal traveler, like traveling is your habit and you, you do it very often, right? And let's just say you are going somewhere with your family and you're not sure about that place. You need, uh, you know, help and information from someone to guide you on this whole trip. So what kind of prompt you're gonna put in chat GPT uh, in order to get help. So I'll write here. I'm going on a trip to Paris with my wife and kids. This is my first ever trip to Paris and I'm not sure about that place. So you'll ask ChatGPT to kindly provide me a travel guide so that I can follow when I reach there. So yeah, let's just see what kind of output is going to give it to us on that. All right, yeah, so as you guys can see, it showed me a lot of points, a lot of things that we should be doing in Paris. You say you should first start with accommodation. That's right. Then you have transportation because Paris has excellent public transportation system. The metro in this uh, is the most convenient way to get around the city. All right, then we have must-see attractions. We have museums, parks and gardens. We have river scene, cuisine, shopping, safety and you know we should be aware of the language as well which is french over there so yeah th those are basically out of few important points if you are very new to that place you can just simply get help from chat gpt and uh, you know you can just apply that or implement that over there without any problem so yeah let's just give it one more example let's just say if you are very very new to that if you feel like never done traveling before you've never been to a plane you've never been to any other place except your city so how can you use ChatGPT for that. Like, what kind of strategy then ChatGPT can give it to us? So let's just see that. Okay, so I've typed. I've been never. Uh, I've been never to any trip before. Suggest me some important points to follow while flying uh, to some other city for recreation. So let's just see with that how it's gonna provide strategies to us. Uh, all right. So yeah, as you guys can see, it showed me like nine to ten important points that we should be following. First of all, we have plane and book in advance, which is obviously the far most important thing to do. Then you should travel, uh, check travel documents. Then you should pack smartly. All right, that is looking pretty good. Then we should be arriving at the airport early. All right, follow security procedures, stay hydrated, comfortable attire, stay entertained, stretch and move. We should, and at the end, follow COVID-19 guidelines, which is once again, the most important thing to follow. Let's just see if you are a professional traveler, like you do this for a living and you, you're flying to some other country and you're not familiar with your culture, you're not familiar like how they speak, how they are. So you, you can provide all your details, like what kind of a person you are, your race, your cost, your country and everything like that. And you can get to know about that country's culture, what kind of people they are what they do so let's just type in 
I am a professional traveler. I have traveled to many places, but this time I'm traveling to Germany, but I'm not familiar with their culture and way of living. Kindly guide me with everything possible about life in Germany. So yeah, let's just see what output is going to give it to us. All right, yeah, so as you guys can see, we have got a lot of important points about the culture and way of living in Germany. First of all, it says uh, Germans value punctuality and accept others to be on time. Then we have efficiency and orderliness. Then we had direct communication, personal space, recycling and environment consciousness, cash versus cars, which is also uh, some important point that you need to know when you're uh, like moving to some other country, flying to some other country. Work-life balance, we have German cuisine, festival traditions, learn basic German, and you know, everything like that. Now you can uh, get an idea from all that, and you know, if you have any confusion, you can always ask questions again to ChatGPT. Like, uh, let's just say if you're not familiar, like, what is German cuisine, right? So you can just type in what is German cuisine, and it will give you the answer for that, no problem at all. So you can play with that, like, how you want. So this is how good of the AI has become, you know? So now this is just like your personal teacher or personal coach that is here for you to guide 24 7 no matter how much of confusion you have, how many, how much of a problem or questions you have. So yeah, that was basically it for today's video. In this video, we did about uh, how you can use chat GBT in, uh, in traveling as a traveler guide or a coach. So yeah, that will be it for today's video. I hope you liked it and I'll see you on the next one. Take care. Bye-bye. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to another video of Prompt Engineering Real Life Examples module. We're in this video today. We'll be doing an example of how you can use chat GPT in educational institutes. So this will be for both uh, teachers and students as well. So yeah, I'll be explaining you guys what type of scenarios or situations you can deal with, whether if you are a teacher or you are a student and you want AI to help you do your tasks. So yeah, without any further ado, let's just jump right into our chat GPT. All right, so here I am with my chat GPT open and there was a text or article you can say I found on internet regarding Microsoft and all those details. So first of all, uh, for the example, example will do a scenario like if you are a teacher and you want to make any test or you can say uh, a quiz based exam for your students and you don't have enough time you want AI to help you on that so let's just say if you want to generate MCQs like multiple choice questions out of this text so you can simply write a prompt here and say generate 10 multiple choice questions out of the given text below all right, yeah, so as you guys can see how efficiently and just with a one click, it generated um, 10 MCQs out of that without any problem. These are actually kind of not very easy. These are tricky ones as well. So if you want, if you want to make it complex ones, you can prompt it to make it as hard as you want for your students. So yeah, this is how you can get help from that. And if you, if you want, uh, you can generate Fill in the blanks out of that as well. You're just gonna you're just gonna uh, prompt the same thing, but instead of multiple choice question, I'm just gonna generate ten fill in the blanks out of the given text below, and you're gonna hit enter. And yeah, now you can see uh, I just generated fill in the blanks for you uh, instead of MCQs. So yeah, whatever, uh, it's totally up to you, like how you want to play with that. Uh, if you want ChatGPT to generate questions out of that, it can do that for you. Yes. So as you can see, it's very helpful for now teachers. You know, you don't have to put a lot of effort into that. Now here you can say uh, like the work of hours can be done in just two seconds. So this is how efficient and this is how good the AI has become and chat GPT is one of the example or one of the you can say a proof for that. All right, so let's just say if you are a student and you are given any assignment or any task from your teacher and you have a deadline and you want to do it as quickly as you can. So from that you can get help from chat GPT, but there's a reminder. Obviously, uh, you can get help uh, from chat GPT, but you cannot be dependent on the chat GPT to do the whole entire essay or you can say an entire homework for you because homework is meant to be done by yourself. So yeah, uh, let's just say if you are given any essay about uh, advantages and disadvantages of mobile phone for students. So you can write a prompt as write an essay write an essay of 300 words you can limit the words as well if you want and you can send topic of let's just say for today i take an example of advantages and disadvantages of mobile phone let's just hit enter 
All right, yeah, so as you guys can see, this appeared to be quite a good format and a proper format of an essay because in essay, we first of all have an introductory paragraph, then we have three to four paragraphs of body that we can see over here right now in which it provided few of the advantages and few of the disadvantages as well. And at the end, we do have a conclusion part as well. So yeah, that justifies like, you know, how convenient and efficient the AI has become, you know, your like work of hours can now be done in just a few seconds and you can play with it as, as much as you want. You can limit the words, you can change the topic, you can customize it as of your choice, as of your taste. So yeah, how cool and efficient it has become. So this is no doubt to be uh, the future of uh, AI and technology moving forward. So yeah, that was a quick little example of how you can use uh, chat GPT in educational purpose in educational institutes if you are a teacher it can be very helpful for you whether if you are a student that can be a great help a great lead for you guys as well that would be it for uh, today's video i hope you liked it and i'll see you guys in my next video of real life example of prompt engineering hey guys what's up welcome back to another video of prompt engineering real life examples where in this video we'll be discussing about use of chat gpt in medical industries which can be like hospitals clinics or any healthcare uh, institution so yeah without any further ado let's just dive right into our chat dvd all right so first of all if we can see like what kind of uses can we have in the field of medicine or in medical industries so there can be variety of uses right uh, so first of all we can use prompt engineering or ai for research purposes if you want to look it up at some disease or some medicine or any you know health related problems so obviously we can use ai or chat gpt in that and other than that there can be many other uh, uses of that one of them could be we can use that as data analysis of any patient or any person or anything and the other use can be you can use that in some clinical researches or something like that so yeah there can be a variety of uses but we'll discuss just uh, two to three uses for today just to get an idea like how we can use that very efficiently and accurately in field of medicine all right so so first example we'll be doing a simple one so let's just say if you have any disease or you know if you got some patient who's suffering from some disease or some is telling you some symptoms so how can you advise that and how can you get help from chat gpt to help you prescribe to that patient so yeah let's just write air all right so i've written a patient here uh, is telling symptoms of cough fever and running nose what can it possibly be so let's just see by these symptoms what kind of recommendation or you can say disease it can tell us all right yes yeah, so as you guys can see based on the symptoms described above so yeah the ai or chat gpt has told us like you know it can be many potential causes so one of them could be common cold which is obviously very common nowadays uh, the other disease can be a flu or influenza then we have allergies then we also can have COVID-19, which can be a serious problem as well. Then it could be bronchitis as well. So yeah, these could be a few of the possibilities that the patient could have. So yeah, let's just now move forward and see how we can use ChatGPT for data analysis. So let's just say... All right, so I'm telling create me a data analysis of 50 year old patient suffering from chronic disease. So let's just see what kind of uh, data analysis is going to give it to us. All right, yeah, so as you guys can see, uh, I just created a data analysis report of a 50-year-old patient with chronic disease. First of all, it says uh, you can fill it up with patient information, symptoms and clinical presentation, diagnostic tests and measurements, medical history review, treatment and medications, and, you know, every useful information that a doctor or uh, you can say a physician can use, and it can be very helpful for him. So if you want, you can make it a little bit cleaner as well by using one of our, our previous types of prompting that we did, which is which was tabular. So I'm just going to prompt here, like, I'm just going to say provide this whole data to me in tabular format. So let's just see how it's going to provide us now. All right, yeah, so now you can see it's looking a lot cleaner and, you know, every information, every heading is now in its separate table. And with that, it is very easy for us to understand and read that. So, yeah, you can play with that, like, how much you want based on your necessity or requirement. So, yeah, moving forward, let's just go to our last example for today, which was how you can use that in clinical researches. If you want to look up to any uh, medicine or any drug, then you can obviously uh, use it as well. So, I'm just going to type here, like, tell me... I'm just going to type in, tell me the use of paracetamol tablets. So you see what kind of information is going to provide me for that. 
All right, yeah, so as you guys can see now, so I typed in tell me the use of paracetamol tablets and for that it gave me a lot of uses that you can use it for. So first of all, it is a, a good source of a pain relief. Then it can also uh, reduce your fever. Then we have sim symptomatic relief, post-vaccination fever. Then we have osteoarthritis. And you know, these are these were the few of the uses that paracetamol have. So yeah, with that, uh, you can also get a lot of help about different medicines and different drugs from Chad GPT. So you can get an idea from this example, you know. So you can use Chad GPT as a medical instructor or a virtual doctor and you know, something like that in order to help you with all kind of cure with all kind of questions about medical industry all right so that will be it for our video today i hope you guys liked it if you do don't forget to watch more videos and i'll be back with the next one hey guys what's up welcome back to another video of prompt engineering real life examples module where in this video we'll be discussing how you can use a uh, chat gpt or prompt engineering in legal affairs you know it can be if you want to study law or if you are a lawyer and if you want to research about anything or any law you want to gain knowledge about about the legal information that would be involved in that so yeah in all those scenarios you can use chat gpt or ai in that so yeah without further ado let's just jump right into chat gpt okay yes yeah, so here i am with my chat gpt opens okay so for the first scenario let's just say if you are a lawyer right and you know you just completed your law education and you want to study more about how you know law firm goes or how it works and you basically uh want to study that field so yeah what can be different questions or possibilities that you can ask chat gpt in order to get help from that so basically for a lawyer there are uh, some of the factors that you need to have you so let's just see you just want to research on that so i'll be asking chat gpt about that is uh, so i'm going to be asking what are the few uh psychological skills i need to develop in order to be a good lawyer so let's just see what kind of suggestion is going to give it to us all right, yeah, so as you guys can see, it gave me a lot of psychological skills that I should be having in order to be a good lawyer. So first one is critical thinking, and we have communication skills. Then we have emotional intelligence, research and analytical skills, problem solving abilities. And you know, uh, we do have many other um, skills as well. So yeah, these are basically about the knowledge or you can see information uh, you can get from ChatGPT if you are a lawyer and you want to uh, excel in that field. So yeah, for the second phase scenario, you, what we can get help from chat GPT is let's just say uh, you want to research on some law or you want to get knowledge about some laws and you want to know how that law works or something like that how you can do though so let me just give you an example let's just ask chat GPT now all right, so here I am with the scenario. Let's just say you want to start a business in America and you want to know what are the basic laws that I need to follow in order to start a business. So let's just see what kind of laws we need to follow. All right, yeah, so as you guys can see, it just gave me a lot of different laws that you need to be following if you want to start a business in America. So it's just say, first of all, you need to have a business structure, and then you need to select a business name. You need to select a unique name for your business that is not already in use by another company in your state. And you can need to have business license and permits, employer identification number, which is EIN. Then you need to pay taxes, employment laws, and you know, different laws that you, if you want to start a business, obviously, these are a few basic laws that should be uh, in your mind that you need to follow if you want your business to run and to be successful. So yeah, that was basically very helpful. So let's just dig a bit deeper uh, into our law firm knowledge. So let's just ask one more question from Chad GPT. So I'm going to ask, what are the legal rights of tenants uh, in eviction cases? So let's just see what kind of output is going to give it to us for that. All right, yeah, so it provided me uh, a few of the legal rights that tenants have if they are getting evicted from their places. So yeah, it says tenants should have a right of notice. Obviously, they should have uh, the opportunity to cure, then due process, non-retaliation, then right to privacy, right to safe and habitable housing, right to legal counsel. And you know, different things like that. So yeah, if you want, you want you can get more and more knowledge from Chai GPT on that, like how you want to play. You can do that as well, no problem at all. So let's just do the final example for today. Let's just see if you already know about a law and you want to get knowledge about that. Okay, so I'm just gonna hit uh, the name of the law and ask Chai GPT to give me information about that. So I'm gonna ask what is tort law. 
All right, yeah, so as you guys can see, it gave me a little bit of a knowledge about tort law. It says a branch of civil law that deals with civil wrongs, injuries, or harms caused by one person to another. So obviously, it just gave me a lot of points as well where you can get a better idea of what is tort law. So yeah, as you guys can see from that, you can uh, get an idea like how you can use uh, chat DVD in your legal affairs, how you can apply prompt engineering into that. So obviously, these were a few of the scenarios or you can say situation that I provided. So yeah, that was basically it for today's video i hope you liked it don't forget to check out more videos of prompt engineering course and i'll catch you guys in the next one hey guys what's up welcome back to another video of prompt engineering real life examples where in this video i'll be telling you guys how you can use chat gpt or open ai in your google docs in order for you to write content and to generate you know real life examples from ai by its own so yeah before starting uh, as you guys know like google docs is an online a word processor that lets you create and format documents and work with other people and is actually included as part of the free web-based Google Docs editor suite uh, that is actually offered by Google and which also includes uh, Google Sheets, Google Slides, Google Drawings and you know Google Forms and all those other tools. So yeah you can also uh, use uh, ChatGPT in those tools as well by this same exact procedure. So yeah without further ado let's just jump right into our lab where I will show you how you can set up and integrate that. Alright so first of all what you're gonna need to do is you're gonna need to open your Google Docs link on your browser. Alright and the next thing you need to do is is you need to go to eight options on the top left there and you need to go to this extensions options right here and you need to click on ads on and it will give you an option uh, to get ads on that means you can install and integrate any extension to your google docs now and after that uh, a google workspace marketplace column will appear uh, into your google docs and after that you can search gpt for docs over here and you know hit search and yet the first option uh, that will appear on your google workspace marketplace which will be gpt for sheets and docs you need to click on that and you're gonna hit install and yeah as you guys can see showing like gpt for sheets and docs has been installed then you're gonna hit next and done and yeah, uh, after uh, these basic steps, uh, the GPT for Sheets in your Google Docs will be installed. And yeah, let's just now activate this. And for that, I'll show you how you can do that as well. For that, uh, you need to go into your extensions column once again. And on that, GPT for Sheets uh, option will appear as soon as you will install that. You need to go into that. And it will give you a few of the options. And you will have to go to the option that says Set API Key. And then it will ask you for your OpenAI API key. So how you can get that? Let me show you guys that as well. For OpenAI API key, you need to go into this link that I showed you on the screen as well. You can copy and paste uh, this link into your browser and it will guide you to this uh, website right away. This is basically a website for OpenAI overview. And on that, you need to go into uh, the top right option which says personal you need to click on that and you need to go to the view api keys over here you need to click on that so it will open an option for you for the api keys now what you want to do is you need to create a new secret key that will give you an api key number so that will be useful for you in order to put that into your google docs and after that your uh, chat gpt in google docs will be activated and ready to use you need to copy that now by hitting that green option over here. You need to click OK. And after all that, you need to come back to your Google Docs now. Paste that API key over here. You need to click on check. So yeah, it says your OpenAI API key is valid. Now you need to click on save API key. And yeah, with all these little steps, now your chat GPT has been integrated and installed in your Google Docs. Now let's check this out by giving it a few examples to, to see whether it's uh, working or not. And yeah, to open that chat GPT tab, you need to go into the extensions again, go to the GPT for Sheets and Docs. And you need to launch that sidebar. So you will hit the option on launch sidebar. And yeah, now you can see this sidebar will appear where it says to choose an action. You need to type in your prompt and you need to submit that and it will insert it in your Google Docs right away. So let's just go for an example and say it 
write a birthday letter to my best friend john and let's just submit it and yes, you guys can see with the help of that prompt, they just created a whole birthday letter to my best friend John, which is happy birthday buddy. It's hard to believe that another year has passed. So this is a very nice birthday letter that we can that we generated from AI in our Google Docs. All right, so next example, we can let uh, Chat GPT or AI write any agreement for us. It can be any rental agreement, or you can say any employment letter between employer and an employee. So yeah, I'm just gonna type over here. I'm just going to ask him to write me a rental agreement between two parties. This can be any parties uh, of tenant or uh, the owner. So let's just let's submit and see what kind of uh, agreement is going to write it for us. All right. Yeah. So as you guys can see, with just one click, it just wrote a whole rental agreement for us between a landlord and a tenant. So that's exactly what we want. So these are basically a few of the heading, which is property term rent security deposit use of property maintenance so yeah now you know with the help of a chat gpt you can write any agreement or any letter between any two parties and yeah let's just go for one more example where this time i'll be writing something a little bit different so let's just write here so i'm just gonna ask him to write me a forfeit proposal to code for a red light signal challenge so let's just see what is gonna write it for us now so yeah, so now it just created a whole application or kind of a letter you can say to court you which says your honor as a penalty for the red light signal challenge. I propose that I'll be required to attend a traffic safety course. This court will be educating. So now forfeit that red light signal challenge. So it has written a whole uh, proposal for us with a very nice structural template. So yeah, now you can use this template and use this proposal in your respectively scenario. So yeah, as you guys can see with the help of AI, now you can write essays, paragraphs, any article or anything of your favorite topic with the help of just prompts to using chat GPT in Google Docs. So yeah, that will be it for today's video. I hope you guys liked it. Uh, if you do, don't forget to watch more of our videos on this prompt engineering course and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to another video of prompt engineering real life examples. We are in this video uh, today. I'll be showing you guys how you can use chat GPT in Google Sheets. Previously, I told you guys a complete lab, a complete tutorial about how you can use chat GPT in Google Docs. Uh, so this time we'll be seeing again how you can use chat GPT in Google Sheets as well. So it is actually a lot similar process uh, for setup. So uh, we won't get into the setup part because we already done in the Google sheets one it's exactly the similar process that's why uh so yeah without any further ado let's just jump right into our google sheets all right so here i am with my google sheets open so first of all what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to check like whether your chat gpt extensions is open or not so we're going to go to the gpt for sheets you're going to just hit launch and it will launch all those uh, functions for you all right, so after that, you're going to see a GPT for Sheets and Docs bar on your right corner. So on that, uh, you will get two options, whether you can generate formula out of that. And you can also uh, type in your formula and the chat GPT will let you explain that for you. So this is actually a one step more thing uh, in Google Sheets than Google Docs. So yeah, without any further ado, let's just go with your example. So first one, I'm going to go with a simple example. First of all, I'm going to type here generate me a list of random numbers from 1 to 100 and we're gonna need generate formula all right yeah so as you guys can see just generated a formula for me uh which is ran between 1 comma 100 so that is the correct formula for our prompt that we just typed in so after that you're gonna hit it insert in active cell but first of all you need to uh, select your cell in the google sheet which i will do C over here in my case, I'm gonna need insert in active cell. All right, yes, yeah, so as you guys can see, generated a random number for me in my first cell. And if I can drag this down till wherever I want, it will keep on generating random numbers for me, but all of them will be in between one to 100. So yeah, by that, uh, we can make sure like our formula is working perfectly fine. So if we go ahead and check our explain formula column, so we can do that as well. We can copy the same formula and paste it in our explain formula column and yeah just hit explain formula so let's see what it's going to say to us so i say this formula ran between 100 generates a random number between 1 to 100 both 
inclusive in Google Sheets. So yeah, explain formula is also working for us perfectly fine. So yep, this was actually a very basic example. So if we go ahead and, you know, just dive more into like real life examples. So what else can we do out of that, out of ChatGPT, right? Uh, so I can ask ChatGPT to generate me a whole list of household chores that I have to do my whole day, or I can do, I can uh, let ChatGPT to set me a routine for my gym time. So yeah, uh, let's just uh, go with both of these examples and see whether ChatGPT will get this done for us or not. I'm going to ask him to create me a list of household chores in a day. I'm going to hit generate formula. So yes, it's just generated a formula for me and I, now I'm going to select my cell and let's just go for I in this case. I'm just going to hit insert in active cell. All right, yes. Yeah, so as you guys can see in our I cell, it just created me a list of household chores that I could do in a day which is dusting, mopping, vacuuming, washing dishes and all that. So yeah, these are basically kind of a list that we can generate out of ChatGPT in Google Sheets. But let's now dive more and more into that and ask him to create me a routine uh, of gym exercises which I can do in, in a day. So let's just see if, if it can create me a routine out of that. So yeah, um, I just started and create me a gym routine for me in a day. So let's just go ahead and select my cell now. I'm just going to select C for that and insert in active cell. All right, so it just created me a whole list for me, which says Monday you have to do cardio, circuit training, core workouts, and for Tuesday it's generated the same for me. For Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday will be for the rest, all right? It seems absolutely fine to me, but if we can go ahead and we can copy that and paste it into our explain formula, so as you guys can see, so this formula provides a weekly workout plan with different activities for each day of the week. It includes type of workout such as cardio, resistance weights, boot camp, yoga, leometrics, medicine ball exercises. So yeah, our explain formula column is also working absolutely fine for this case as well. So yeah, that will be actually it for uh, today's video. In this video, I told you guys how you can uh, use ChatGPT or OpenAI in your Google Sheets and you can let that do a lot of tasks for you no matter what do you want. So yeah, that will be uh, it for today's video. I hope you guys liked it. If you do, don't forget to watch more videos of this course and I'll catch you in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye. Hey guys, welcome back to our last module of Prompt Engineering course where uh, in this module, we'll be discussing about some of the ethics and consideration uh, of Prompt Engineering that you need to uh, keep that in mind if you are engaging with AI. So the first one of that is uh, ensuring fairness and reducing bias. So today, uh, we'll learn how to create inclusive prompts and consider the impact of our language models on a diverse audience. First, uh, let's just see how we can uh, reduce bias in AI system. Uh, so for that, first of all, should keep that in mind about the sources of bias uh, in AI system and should be aware of different types of bias, which are gender bias, racial or ethnic bias, and socioeconomic bias in geography as well. We should be uh, mindful of these bias when we craft uh, prompts and evaluate AI generated outputs. So if we move further, here are some strategies that we can use to reduce by inner prompts. Uh, we can use inclusive language inner prompts. And second of all, uh, we can also try to use diverse and balanced examples in your prompts if you want uh, AI to give you the best output possible for you. And at the end, you can also uh, test your prompts with a variety of inputs until you achieve a bias free results. So that basically means uh, you should put as many variety of inputs as possible until and unless you reach a perfect output and the AI has given you the accurate and exact output that you want. And for the ethical considerations, uh, here are some questions that you can ask to yourself uh, after getting an output. So you can see, does the output reinforce any stereotypes or harmful biases? So that should be uh, one of the main points that you can question uh, yourself about the output that you get. So obviously, uh, the AI isn't like error free at all. It also has some error errors in that. So these type of questions could be very useful for you. You know, you, these can like help you uh, double check the output that you have and this can lead you uh, to get a good, accurate and a bias free prompt output. And the other uh, consideration that you can see is could the content be harmful, divisive or offensive. Uh, so these are also some of the important points that should be in your mind. So whether you are getting any offensive or harmful uh, content from AI or not. So yeah, these kind of ethical consideration can really Really help you a lot by being mindful of these factors and continuously defining our prompts 
we can, you know, create uh, AI applications uh, that can empower and serve many of our uh, diverse audiences. So yeah, these can be very helpful in that case. All right, so yeah, that will be it for uh, this video. I hope you guys liked it and I'll catch you guys in the next video of this module. Until then, take care. Hey guys, welcome back to our next topic of our last module, which is prompt engineering ethics and consideration. And in this video today, uh, we'll be discussing what are some privacy and data securities that you can uh, do with AI, uh, that you can apply on AI to save your data and help you for your better privacy. Uh, you know, when working with AI, we often use uh, sensitive information like personal data, or you can say confidential records. Uh, so it is very crucial uh, to protect this information and ensure uh, that our AI system handle it with care. So first of all, if you see what is data privacy, so data privacy is a discipline intended to keep your data safe against improper access, theft or loss. So if you can see that in the context of AI, uh, like privacy is essential, right, to ensure that AI systems are not used to uh, like manipulate individual or you know discriminate against uh, them based on their personal data so that is why basically why uh, your data or you can say your confidential information is very necessary because uh, nobody wants his or her data to be lost or you know illegally used so yeah moving forward if you can see what is data security as well so data security is a process of safeguarding digital information throughout its entire life cycle and to protect it from corruption, theft or unauthorized access. And in the view of AI, uh, AI can identify and prioritize a risk, instantly spot any malware on any network, guide incident response, and detect intrusions before they start. So basically, our data security is, you know, saving your data from any theft, loss, or corruption, and, you know, giving it some prioritized response just to save your data or, you know, just help restrain it from any corruption or data loss. All right, so if you move forward here, are some practices that you can do for your data security so first of all you can do is you can use encrypted communication channels because you know uh, when sharing prompts and results uh, make sure that generated content does not include any sensitive information before sharing that content and also finally uh, it is also very important to remember uh, that privacy and data security are actually ongoing efforts, right? As technology evolves, so uh, do the potential risks and challenges by staying informed about the emerging threats and best practices we can continue to create uh, is AI-powered solution that are both powerful and responsible. So yeah, these are basically a few of the practices that you can do just to save your data or, you know, just to save your uh, confidential information and, you know, just help it not to get lost or uh, go away. So yeah, that will be it for uh, this video. I hope you guys liked it. If you do, don't forget to watch more videos on this course and I'll catch you in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye. Okay, so in conclusion, uh, this prompt engineering course has provided you with a solid foundation to start your journey in the world of prompt engineering. So in this course, uh, you have learned about different types of prompting and with that, how you can solve real life problems. You have also uh, gained important skills like thinking critically and solving problems. So with all this knowledge and all those skills, are you are now ready to face the challenges that will come to your way and make a positive impact on society through your prompt engineering work. But remember, uh, you need to keep learning and exploring and yeah, let your passion for prompt engineering guide you to a successful and fulfilling career. Once again, I congratulate all of you guys and I'm really thankful to every single one of them who joined me with this course and be a part of 